Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast Post BronyCon Edition. Welcome Ooh. back, everybody. Last week you had the non BronyCon. Today you have <laughs> pure distilled. Those fucking Bronycon. nerds. Those yeah. non BronyCon. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that, everyone. The nightmare's over. Yep, you're welcome. Ben, ben Saint here. is back. <laughs> hmm. the, the the glorious hmm. Ben and Nate combo is finally back. <laughs> everyone was dying everyone for was it once it. again. Everyone, everyone was complaining. <laughs> Where is Ben and Nate? Where is Ben and Nate? Duo? Where's We've Ben come and Nate? To an understanding I need to now. know what they thought about Bernie Sanders' appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. Listen, we've, we've got to we, know. We we've got to know. For through the past weekend and week, we have been putting our hooves up over and over and over <laughs> again, just completely <laughs> thrashing around, just dancing uh, our uh, our hearts out about Bernie Con. But now that's over. That was the last Bernie Con we will ever experience. And can we please put yeah, our hooves over. not up, but over our heart and pray? <laughs> Can we get some doing forward right slash right parentheses in the chat, please? Can we please get those flooding the chat? I would really appreciate that. Uh, Munchie, Ben, Gib, Jesse, the whole crew's here. Plus, uh, me, all the people boy. who went to BernieCon. Yeah, yeah, it's literally all of us and I no hope, one was, who did. Was this go. intentional? Did we do this on purpose? Uh, obviously, not really. Not okay. really. Well, all right then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, nah, not really. Fuck yeah. Uh, well, well, it was a glorious time. I, that's I, I that's for say sure. Right off the bat, glorious, as we told yeah. everyone who went to BronyCon, uh, this was mm-hmm. not what was destined to be because there was another person who was supposed to be here and that we cried yeah, yeah. and cried about not being here. And Tom. Tom was going yeah. to be at BronyCon and it was going to be incredible. Uh, we he has more friends at BronyCon than us. Like he a did. lot more. No, no. He was, <laughs> going to be in, he was going to be in Illuminati secret spirit cooking parties and it was going yeah. to be great. It was going to be a great time. But his back is just so fucked up that he couldn't even make it it's a literally like a nightmare and like i'm scared for him well who knows man i hope he is better his or back or his legs or i'm not 100 percent clear I, on the. No, I, I did the last pcp he i'm sure he discussed that at some le- i don't know how much he said i didn't listen I, to it but i uh, have not listened to the last one yet i have listened yeah. to it yeah. and they, also they, they, digi they told, didn't t- come t- because he has a wicked oh, heart oh. <laughs> For, for all the yeah, all the sympathy we have toward Digi, let's talk about Digi's wicked to, heart for a second. Um, all the sympathy matter. we have for no, Tom about, turns into Tom. rage at Digi. Yeah, for his well, cynical, evil heart well, and not I, wanting to be with friends. I, I, I just want to say to even push this even further because you may think, oh, well, you know, Tom might have been fucked up, but like, you know, he's a poor boy too. Like we, like, like Nate specifically was like offering to help pay for his flight to get to Bronicon. Well, we did look into and, arrangements yeah, somewhat to yeah, yeah. see what could and, be like, done. And like, even if that was paid for, Tom said he still couldn't go. It's just pure pain. It's let me tell you. World let me, only let me tell you. So, so, so I, th- I don't. I don't remember who's. It was Nate or Munchie. It was one of your. One of you suggested that, like, well, what if you come and we just carted you around in a wheelchair? What if we push you around in a wheelchair? Yeah, me and Michelle and came I, up with that. Unironically, was like, dude, I will be the wheelchair push guy. I, if I, that's my excuse not to talk to anyone. Like, <laughs> no, I don't have to do anything. I have the excuse, like, no, I gotta fucking push a thing. I gotta do it. Nah, sorry guys, I can't fucking do this. I'm out. Yeah, I have, sorry responsibilities. Oh, I'd love to, but I have to push this wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, that. That was gonna, you know it was gonna Tom's wheelchair was going to be my the the the, the talk the, of the town. No, no, no Tom's doubt. wheelchair was going to be the guitar to my give and take at a party. If you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I do. Yeah, I do. yeah. But it didn't. But it wasn't mm. to be. So fuck you, Tom. You couldn't you, you couldn't do the, you couldn't do me this one thing and give me you that. You couldn't out. even help Ben in this one aspect of you, life. You Truly even a useless help man. Ben cheat out of social scenarios. You couldn't even help Ben cheat at life. So what are you That's good right. for? You so know, what every you every opportunity that was ripped away from Tom, tragically, is an opportunity that Digi squandered willingly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Deliberately, mm. maliciously. We tried to get him to come. <laughs> maliciously. Look, I I know he had just been to Otacon the weekend before. I know that's true. But he had what, four days to rest up? Plenty of time. Time. Plenty of time. I mean, I right. came no, 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 no. straight, I'm not, as, I'm I'm straight, straight to, to, to break on Digi from head on Earth. I will defend him until the day I die. Nothing to do with Otacon. He had been saying forever that, no, guys, that sounds dumb. That's dumb. Why would I want to go to and this is that thing. This is that thing I think, I think it, it, it permeates this group to some degree that is this deep-rooted shame about having been a pony boy at one time. <laughs> I never identified as a brony, but I have zero shame I also, about... I being a pony boy I think back it's in the day. Who has shame? 
literally who has no, shame. No, no, it's just Digi that has shame. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I think I think it's I really think it's just Digi. Yeah. Okay, maybe maybe it is. Maybe it is. Uh <laughs> maybe, maybe Tom, I don't think Tom. Do you think Tom? Do you think Tom has the shame? I think um, Tom's got that brony I, I shame. I don't. I, d- I don't. No, not really. Do you think? Do you think Mage? Do you think Mage? You know, Ma- Mage maybe a little bit. Maybe a little. I don't think. Bit. Ma- I don't know if Mage has the brony shame. She's definitely got brony rage from like people messaging her, <laughs> asking her like, "Hey, brony I love rage. how you draw pony." You, you, like, know, you know what? I think she's Mage frustrated has? about that. I think Mage is the very normal, maybe kind of like artist cycle thing. Like Mage is a little different from she's us. Been, she's mad that she's been typecast. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And like she kind of has moved on artistically and I think feels a little annoyed. She's still associated with that fairly strongly. So I, I think she has some annoyance at that. But yeah. I mean, she could. She could tell okay. you all about it, I'm sure. Right. Okay, let's look at this from Digi's perspective. You know, he, sure. of, of course, you know, he has no reason to go to BronyCon other than to meet us. Well, and none around, of us had and a and reason around, to go. Uh, why, why do you think I fucking went, well, motherfucker? Well, hey, right. listen, I, I listen, listened stop. to the podcast he was on and he did say that the reason uh-huh. it was like he would he wanted to see us, but like like Radcon is like not too far off in the distance. Exactly, I was just about to say, yeah, yeah. It, Ra- it, like, Radcon. Okay, well, we don't know that, that we, nobody, nobody's planned close. Radcon like, at all. Like, There's no nobody has planned it. We, we like, do not have. We like, do not have a plan. The desire is there to do it like kind of soon. Yeah, the desire. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose. This sounds like and, a and, rationalization and I would ima- to me. And I would me, imagine but... that he wouldn't would rather think like, oh well, I'll wait for that as opposed to do something which I don't want to do, but just have my, the 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 frosting of my friends are there also sprinkled on top of. Like I think all of the BronyCon things he would hate, mm-hmm. which I did as well, even though I thought it was funny, ironically, and I was able to have fun with you Let guys. Me, the only the bad. only times I felt good. joy at BronyCon that were not in spite of BronyCon were any time mm-hmm. that a song from Friendship Is Witchcraft came on, and then I was like, I'm unironically back into it. I remember. <laughs> I remember why I gave a shit, and then the song would end. I'd be like, oh, "This is the fucking worst. This is a fucking nightmare." <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I mean, you had a I you mean, had a I couple have... like 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 depressed like on the floor. Ben Saint hates Bronicon <laughs> moments. I did. Yeah, I did. No, I yeah. But yeah there were let's quite talk a few about those. Of, those of the of the famous Ben Saint tantrums. Let's all talk, not, convention not, floor. They were not tantrums. Let's talk about <laughs> let's let's talk about my depressive episodes at BronyCon. Sure. I was you had a hot, you had low lows and low highs at BronyCon. Well, and, and first of all, the whole oh, thing is underscored so by bad. this this Twitter thread that you're doing of you, you know, oh, here I go to BronyCon. <laughs> yeah. Here I am meeting my friends that at BronyCon. Was, yeah, Sigh. The thing about that that was that was ironically ironic. Indeed. You know Indeed. what I mean? That was like double <laughs> ironic. Of the, course. So oh. it was like ha- half sincere. Hmm. Um, it was like it was like I genuinely feel dread and terror and dismay <laughs> at the thought that I have to go do this, even though I think I will probably have a good time. And I was like, how can I monetize it? Um, so I put it on Twitter <laughs> and made zero dollars. Could have vlogged, I suppose. Perhaps I don't know. I could have vlogged. Is that, but, is that uh, a way to get money? Maybe. I don't know. What, what <laughs> even is what even is money? No one I, knows. <laughs> I almost feel a little bit stupid going to BronyCon. Like I feel a little bit like I've made no. the worst decision. No, no, really. I H- because hottest, what, take, why, hottest take of the year. At, at, at first, I thought it was going to be like a mix of like, oh, you know, I'm going to BronyCon. I'll be with my friends. That will be the main source of passion and joy. But also, mm-hmm. like you know, like I, I will sort of like go to a panel or two and just be like, haha, isn't this silly? Or also even just go around to the vendor's Dude, hall and buy. I anything. couldn't get one iota yeah. of joy from like yeah, real no, pony not shit. No, no, I'm done. Panel. So no done. panel was any good. No. Yeah. yeah agreed. Yeah. No. I mean, the like, Lauren Faust was... one was like kind of good, but oh, okay. it was also kind of depressing because she was she was like talking yeah, a little okay. bit about like all right. Here's the, the, here's the, one, the, like... the, the one interesting thing about that panel was mm. that um she was talking about her like plans. She's like, wow, for, you guys really fucked this up, huh? <laughs> like the, the plans for the main six and all that. And yeah, season yeah. one, she she was doing the thing. It's like she didn't know whether there was going to be a season three. So for season two. Mm-hmm. She just sort of treaded water, and she didn't like introduce the plot elements that she wanted to expand on in case the show mm. didn't continue. And then they got oh. rid of her. So like that was her biggest regret that she didn't start like her her pony story. And Dude, he- hearing okay. her talk is, about that, that was just like that was like oh, so like it it's you know really sad. I mean I already knew it was really sad, but like she sounded really sad, and it sucked. Maybe she'll okay. recycle those me, for another me, story. Me, Hippo, and Jesse were all in this panel together, and like there mm. were like several moments of like across the board, everyone there had their own like sad moment. They had their own like like Lily of the Valley moment, if you will. Uh, no. Where, <laughs> uh, 
uh, so like even even Lauren Faust was uh, the demon to another. So like Bonnie Zachary, a person who first made Malapony, like one of like th- 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 I had heard this before on one of the like thousand. Wait, like made Lauren it Faust back again. in like the fucking yes. 60s or yeah, whatever? Yeah. Yes. yeah. She was she was mm-hmm. there. Yeah. yeah, she was there. Whoa! How, well, how old is she? Uh, She's old. like seventy. She's like eighty. Oh my something. god. Wow. Okay. Well, well, okay. Well, whatever. Lauren Faust, mm-hmm. like one of like the 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 funny the funny sound bites that she always says is that you know when, when she was brought into Hasbro and the, the, someone showed her like a like a My Little Pony movie and they're like, hey, what do you think about this? And she's like, wow, this is really bad. I can do it better, basically. Right. And then she repeated that story and like Bonnie like was there and like you could <laughs> yeah. see her Lol. like like squint and cringe a little bit. Wait, what <laughs> did she, what did she say about the movie? They, the, the, Lauren Faust said that sucked. the movie was really bad. Did she yeah. watch it? That the old show was shit and yeah, terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, How and, uncomfortable. No, 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 okay. No, Ben, it's, it gets worse. Smash we did a review later. of that like first ever L- special later, of Marvel later, Pony. I don't know if that was in, the first one panel, ever, but there is yeah, a point uh, where, mm-hmm. where Lauren Faust is like re- like describing like an old show that she wanted to pitch to a network, but it, she didn't really get the pitch together. Was uh, it Galaxy but, Girls? No, it wasn't that. Okay. So All she right. was doing that, and then Bonnie was like, "You know what? You should make that into like a book, like like a pop up book. That would be a really interesting thing to have in a book." Uh, and then Lauren Faust, or, so, or I think the the moderator was like, "You should like you do should work together. That'd be really cool." And then Bonnie was like, "Oh no, Lauren's a way better artist than I am, and she's a way better oh, writer than no, I am. So no. I wouldn't have anything to add." Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, get fucked! Get fucked, you old bitch! Get <laughs> fucked, you old bitch! Die, boomer! Die! Literally like listening to an episode of Quick Draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was so uh, sad. Everything was sad. Everything was terrible. Everyone looked like they had like wasted their lives, and they had. <laughs> At the end of the panel, they brought a coffin in, and they got Bonnie to climb in, and they carried her. A, a, a pink coffin with 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 pony tassels. Yeah, with like like and, and like, like a, a, a stone puny mark. On it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. gave her a noose, and they gave her a noose, and it was like that GIF where you're looking through the noose and you see the anime girls, but it was My Little Pony. Mm. Okay, it, it, it was very clear that nobody gets out of this fandom without a lingering depression that will last a lifetime from it. <laughs> Even the creator. <laughs> Even the creators. Yeah. It's just okay. Think about it. how much suffering has Lauren Faust it, like it inflicted upon the world? Like how much like net total suffering has she personally literally caused? worse than Hitler? Yeah. Um, you know what? Like, I w- don't even you know, think they're that you know, incompetent. At least Hitler's victims were dead afterwards. Yeah. We have to live with this trauma. <laughs> <laughs> it's a literal nightmare. So that was the only panel that was even slightly positive interesting. The rest of them weren't yeah, even yeah. funny, ironically. The rest of them were just straight up, like, a fucking nightmare Well, slum. no, no. There was the, uh, the, uh, the, the costume runway panel. Oh, 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 yeah. oh with the Fluttershy? You want to talk about <laughs> Big about Evil Fluttershy? Fluttershy. That was, was alright, I, I guess. I had yeah, my talk about soul the sucked out of my body and, <laughs> and floated <laughs> off to a cosmic realm beyond the scope of mortal comprehension. Like, the actual winners of that contest, I mean, whatever, they were, like, kind yeah, of okay, I guess, good, who cares? You know, some, but some, 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 some I, competent I really, costuming work going on there. Mm, the the, the moment when, like, you, Jesse, burst into laughter, like, as loud <laughs> as you possibly could, I was like, oh my god, like we were sitting well, at the like, back, so nobody could hear, but it was like really loud, and it was like, "Oh my god, this this Fluttershy has killed Jesse." <laughs> yeah, well, it was like eight feet tall. Well, well, like we had like a group of like a bunch of like fans and like lesser YouTubers like hanging yeah. around us and stuff, and so like there was people around, you know, like laughing at my jokes and shit because they thought I was cool. So I was Indeed. like, <laughs> so when the when the costume panel started, you know, I had this. I had this bottle of wild Irish rose that I had bought that morning at the liquor store across from my hotel room. So I, I you know, I immediately I started drinking as the panel started, and it was just mm-hmm. enough to get me like perfect drunk. And so I was like cracking jokes. I was like doing running commentary, like making like quips about everyone who came out and all the costumes and all the all the <laughs> all the little uh, you know the the glad handing hangers on around me. Dude, it was like a let's play jokes and stuff. Yeah, it was like a let's play, but like real life. Like, so, is there a word for that? So, so I don't I was, know. So I was feeling pretty confident. It's called comedy. I was feeling pretty self assured in my place in the universe. I was like, nothing Indeed. can possibly rock my perceptions of the world. Mm. I, I I know exactly who and where I am. So um so right at like right at peak drunk, this costume comes out and it's like. 
I guess you would describe it as furry, but that's not doing it justice. It was like yeah. a it was like a fursuit times eleven. It it was this <laughs> lumbering monstrosity, this behemoth from beneath the <laughs> like, deck, like a mecha. It was like yeah. a, it was like yeah. its own like personal robot. It was just rise like face the thing that should not be. It just like mm. lumbered out on. You could hear the earth quake with each lumbering step of this man. It's <laughs> standing ten feet tall, like Paul Bunyan, but even stronger. Um, and it's just, it's like a, it, it had like, it was a, it had like hooves, like no hands, like flat hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was, and like its head was like 10 times bigger than its body. And, <laughs> and its head was kind of like, like rolling around on its shoulders and stuff. <laughs> like a fucking Silent Hill monster, and the, like it was like it was like Aldrich of the Deep from Dark Souls Three that swelled to such yeah, size like that the, it lost shape and like became like a formless the, mass. The, the costume, but it was supposed to be Fluttershy. It was so ill fitting that it was just like every part of it was just like loose and like moving around yeah. like a, like a Jacob's Ladder <laughs> abomination. And it's fucking ten feet tall, and it lumbers out on stage, and I'm at peak drunk, and I just see it and. Something happened in my body, <laughs> like my soul came out through my eyeballs. It was like you ever see that music video where the girl in the pool, and at the end she sees the, yes. the eldritch thing, and her eyeballs explode. Mm-hmm. It was that. Fan- I think it's called fantasy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I can't explain why uh, uh, any more than I just did. Why it was the greatest thing I have ever or will ever see. But it captivated me. It got inside my brain. It drove me to the brink of madness. I am its thrall. I became this eldritch creature's thrall for all time. I will serve big evil Fluttershy until my dying day. I will I will work to to you know create to to ripple out its machinations throughout my society and the world. I will work to achieve the perfect apocalyptic setting for his glorious <laughs> return. I just I just started laughing harder than I've ever laughed in my life, and like I got dizzy, like my vision was actually blurring, and I I thought I was having a stroke or something. There's like a red I, vignette like around your like field of view, and yeah. you're taking like oh it was noises. like that. Remember that horrible Dark Souls two effect when you enter a boss room and like the weird red pulse yeah, appears yeah, on the yeah. edge it, of the screen. It was exactly like that. Yeah, and yeah. I almost died, and I think maybe I did die. And what is before you now is not the original me, but a, mm-hmm. a superior version created from the uh, the trauma and chaos that was birthed by this monstrosity. And uh, after, like, and then, like, as soon as it was there, it was gone. Like, you didn't see it again for the rest of the panel. At the yeah. end of the panel, like, all the costumes were there at the side, and they were, like, giving out the awards and stuff, but you didn't see Big Evil Fluttershy. Big Evil Fluttershy. Well, which seems impossible, considering the size. Yeah, it just, it just went off stage and disappeared, and it was never seen again. But after the panel, when you guys all went off uh, some direction, mm-hmm. I had, a, like, a spider sense. I, You know, it had, it, it had planted its seed in my brain, so now I can always sense its present. So I knew <laughs> where to go. So I... I, it was, I was I was like a like a I was like a rat in a maze that was cloned from another rat that had already completed the maze. So I knew exactly <laughs> yeah. where to go to find the big evil Fluttershy, and I ended up alone in an elevator with big evil Fluttershy. And and I, and, I, and at first, you know, I dare not uh, speak out of turn amongst my lord. I, I dare not uh, bother it. But after the elevator ride, I couldn't hold back my excitement anymore, and I flagged it down, and I'm like, Big Evil Fluttershy, Big Evil Fluttershy, it's me, your favorite thrall, Endless Jess, global icon and national treasure, here to do your bidding. (laughs) And I saw it without its head on, without its head, and uh, Mm, what what was under the head... I will never say. I will never speak the true identity of Big Evil Fluttershy. <laughs> it's better left to the imagination. Yeah. But it was glorious. And I'm like, Big Evil Fluttershy, can you please, for my familia at home, can you can you put on, can you once more don the Big Evil Fluttershy head and take a picture with me? And it graciously accepted my humble request. And I did get a selfie with Big Evil Fluttershy. And it was the Incredible. peak of my life the greatest moment oblivion I've get that in there we got to get all these but by the way uh while um the while the like the the rankings were finishing up they were like announcing a oh, third place in the costume contest it was uh, some whatever crazy luna celestia fusion thing second place was i don't know some like pinkie pie thing and as like as they're like okay and the winner of the co- we're all chanting big evil fluttershy yeah. big evil fluttershy big evil fluttershy 
Uh, it was not. It was some other idiot. But, you know, Jesse, while that was happening, uh, while you were making your whips and quips, uh, Michelle leaned over to me, uh, you know, my girlfriend at this time, and said to me, Jesse is really funny. And at that moment, two things happened. My my IQ plummeted to zero, and my rage surged to levels never before seen by man. And I knew you had to die. There was no way I could let you live after she said this to me. But I thought I would leave you until you were in a vulnerable position. But alas, you did not let your guard down. So as it you know, says watch your in the holy back. scripture of my Lord Big Evil Fluttershy, haha, get cucked. Retard. <laughs> uh, that that oh, music video time. where the girls in the pool is so apt for this entire thing. Since all of us just <laughs> funnel into this convention center like like cows to the slaughterhouse, ready to fucking finger each other and get our tongues up all up <laughs> inside some brony uh, mouth and ass at the Bronicon mm-hmm. orgy. And we go inside and we just slowly look around as we see the people around us. And we realize there will be no fingering or tongue and ass here. In fact, there will be nothing but your <laughs> eyes firmly planted at the ground as you do the virgin walk up and down the escalators, try not to notice the people around you who will surely rip out your eyes and pull out your intestine if you were to look at them the wrong way. It was oh, literally but luckily, as as long as you equip the sacred red badge of do not approach me, you have an <laughs> yeah. impervious bubble that no one can penetrate. You know, okay, I, 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 I didn't say... feel like, like BronyCon mm-hmm. was like a nightmare. I mean... Yes, it's full of freaks and autists and fat, crazy people who don't know how to dress. <laughs> For sure. Um, or how to but bathe. I kind of like... Or to talk. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's on, on the surface. <laughs> on the surface, it's a nightmare. But there's something about it. I mean, I had just come uh, to BronyCon from retard camp. So I had, I had been like... True. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I forgot. Uh, I, ha- I had been like... T- Taking care of disabled people, so I was I was in the zone at the time, and so just seeing all these people, it's just like yeah, it's normal. Yeah, they're just people. They're just people. Oh and no! They're, and they're... So it was like so it was like if this was like a, a, a desensitized to it. Yeah, a little bit. It's just oh. like I wasn't like blown away by how freak pe- freaky people were. It was just sort of like yeah, ponies are cool. Everyone's having fun. This is great. This is I, I really love. I really love the atmosphere of just like acceptance and uh, like blind like love. love and tolerate, bro. Yeah, I, it was. Okay. It was really stupid, and I liked it. L- okay, listen. No, I it was agree. funny. Yeah, I, but I, I, I ironically just want, okay. had a great time for the record the whole weekend. Same. Same. Well, no, of course, sure. Um, uh, I want to illustrate the kind of people that we were there because it wasn't just like they were like kind of weird. It, okay, for instance, the first night while I'm gaining my badges. There's a person behind us. There's two people, actually, um, who, who I never turned around to look at because I knew if I were to look at them, there would be something wrong. Like, there's just something <laughs> bad would happen. Maybe not even to me, but on the other oh, side of the yeah. world, there would be, like, a terrorist attack in China. Um, mm. So I could only hear their voices. And, you know, separate from them, you know, many rows back in the giant long line that was a registration for the badges, there was a guy playing saxophone, you know, trying to, like, like alleviate some of the stress of being in line, you know, trying to be a fun kind of kooky guy playing Megalovania and other such songs, maybe Smash Mouth a little bit in there trying to have some fun <laughs> spread some joy some he was he was the uh the the meister for the for the entire line and these people just like whenever a note would be produced from the saxophone would like like violently shudder and like actually like exhale and be like ah oh, this shouldn't be allowed like if it were up to me like this wouldn't be allowed in society they would cover their ears they would groan and they would have the most disgusted look on their faces and like like rock back and forth if they were hit with like a psychic wave like a blast to the a shotgun blast to the forehead to the temple like from this dude like making music like it wasn't bad like they they had like a quote unquote like sound sensitivity trigger, which I have no idea what that even means, and I don't even believe it's true for these individuals mm. specifically. Like, they were just constantly just acting like everyone around them was being so annoying and so uncouth did and you, improper did, did, in did line you, registration for did, Bronicon. Did, did you see this person at any other time? Like, did you see no, them later? No, no, never. This was the only experience oh. I had to them. Maybe they, had they to retreat couldn't, back maybe to their they couldn't sound isolation hack it. chamber. Maybe they couldn't hack it and they just didn't show up the next day. Dude, okay, th- they were complaining the entire th- uh, time about, like, fun things that were happening and then when they weren't complaining to one another they were like the only thing that's getting me through this is how good my nails look dude look how good my nails look oh my god your toes look so good bro 
What? You know, not yeah. n- literally not to be mean to these people, but you would simply think if someone has a, a like some trauma related to sound sensitivity, like a con does not seem yeah. like the right place for them to yeah. go, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. Just wear know. earmuffs. So, like, sorry, bro, if you if you are at a con and you don't like con things. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a strange it, it's choice. Ju- I'd it's say. just <laughs> like so like incapable of merely existing. Like just subsistence is like too hard for people at Burning Con. Yeah, like, Metal Gear Solid Three subsistence way Boy, too hard. Boy, that, that's Agreed. a big mood. <sighs> no, you can't say you can't turn into Twitter like this, but you can't say things <laughs> like that. I I unironically uh. said lit yesterday. And it made me sad. It made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I I got Dang. the better of me. Well, you know, be, being around I'm, so many weak people, uh, mm, I think mm. like elevated my powers because all yeah. weekend, like I like like you said, Nate, because I'm I'm so funny. According to Michelle, yeah. it's like all weekend <laughs> I could feel that my chakras were perfectly aligned and my powers were at their peak. I, I was at mm. my most in my po- my most powerful form, mm. and, and and I think it's because like every every time that like it would have dipped, something happened that like rejuvenated me and like pushed more power into me, absorbing more souls like Shang Tsung. It was like you know indeed. It was like seeing Lauren Faust and then seeing Big Evil Fluttershy. And like, Mm -hmm. because I knew it was the last one and it was a big deal. And it's probably the last time that we're going to see some of these people. And the last time we're going to have a chance to like be at the big BronyCon party. It like, I was like willing myself to be in a good mood, like the best possible Mm -hmm. mood the whole time. Because like going to the convention, I didn't, I was like so angry the whole week leading up to it. Like, I don't want to fucking me too. go. I don't want to yeah. fucking yeah. travel. Dude, I don't want to ex- get in the that's fucking exactly plane. That's exactly my yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like right up to like right up to where I got to the convention, I was just like steaming, fuming mad. But then I I like walked in the doors and I'm like, okay, it's business time. It's time to be like a professional. It's time to be everyone's hero. It's time to be global icon and national <laughs> treasure, the horseshoe fucking king, and mm-hmm. shake everybody's hand and kiss everybody's baby and have adventures and have stories to tell. And fucking lose my fucking mind and, and go crazy and have fun. And I lose willed my fucking myself. Card. Yeah. <laughs> lose my V-card. Yeah. <laughs> I willed myself to be like the perfect being. And thanks to the powers of all these like mystical totems that I kept running mm-hmm. into, like Faust and Big Evil Fluttershy, uh, I was able to accomplish that Herculean feat of being cool. It's so disgusting. Of being the, the coolest had... guy at BronyCon. We, we, we've had literally the opposite reaction because the entire like month preceding I was like dude BronyCon lol I can't wait to fucking get credit with BronyCon orgy and then hang out with all my friends and I'm gonna meet like <laughs> like a whole mob of 60 people there and then just like get in I like become autistic there was something about <laughs> me that like made me like want to like blend into the crowd like it made me regress to when I was 13 at the last BronyCon or like you know whenever it made me yeah, like yeah. just like being in that convention center being in that mindset being in my literal little space that is my little pony <laughs> conventions i just receded uh. back into the recesses of my mind and i just became the same person i was so i just became autistic and awkward the entire time <laughs> and i just became like one of the masses like i was receded into like the mob collective of BronyCon the entire time just wasting away but, uh, you know at, at the end i was like mm, it's it's too loud here oh god if we're up to me <laughs> this wouldn't be allowed <laughs> yeah. at, at the end after the convention was over uh that's when like all the suppressed rage and hate started flooding back like all sure. at once because like it's not like there were no annoying things that happened <coughs> during the weekend but it's that mm. like every annoying thing that happened i didn't notice because i was willing myself not to and i was pushing it all down and like the second that i like woke up the day after the convention it was like the valve had turned and it all came pouring back all the fucking first of all all the physical pain and sickness and age that i've been suppressing when i was like reliving my glory days and my youth at the convention and secondly all the pent up rage from the whole ordeal and like like i woke up the day after the after the convention i woke up like in the middle of the night and couldn't get back to sleep and i felt it i felt that i had a fucking sore throat and oh, i'm like yeah. oh yeah. my like just instantly the pure rage because at having a sore throat cuz there's nothing more heinous on this earth and i'm just thinking oh my god which one of you fucking mutants shook my hand and had a fucking disease and now i'm gonna be living with this for a fucking month just like just hating all things and then i fucking went to the airport and i got on a plane and there was a child behind me just the whole flight home going where we going mommy where we going mommy mommy 
Jimmy, where Oi! are we going? Oi, where, where are we going? going? Oh, just you like, want a minge? Yeah, just like right in, <laughs> right in my ear, like a dentist drill, and I'm and just like I I almost went through the gate home at the airport in handcuffs because I was about to chuck that fucking infant out the window, that nine year old <laughs> or whatever infant. Uh, I almost committed a murder on the plane, and uh, and then I got home and I've just been sick and mad and fucking sad the whole time because I'm not That's at BronyCon anymore. I'm, I'm not at, I'm not at my post-con mortal agony because because i'm not in my element anymore the one place that i'm an important person and everyone thinks i'm cool you Uh, know it's almost like some people like work better when dealing with actual human beings one-on-one as opposed to on twitter or social media it's almost (laughs) like that it's a more natural like better way to deal with the world to do it in person you're trying to dispense i I know i know it's hard to imagine (laughs) <laughs> anyway, time to go uh, send uh, tweet well, to Bernie and ask him for his cock pics. <laughs> <laughs> the the theme the theme of my Brony Con was one of mm-hmm. uh, positive character development because the last <laughs> time last time I went it was I I was I mean I am still like a shy person but but mm-hmm. back then I was like <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. I'm crying right now guys <laughs> what are you gonna do about it you gonna change my diaper for me. You know, like, it's really <laughs> funny, and re- I, like, it was the first time traveling alone, first time in America, first time meeting all of you, and oh, yeah, also... you only went once before, right? Yeah, and That's also right. first right. time uh, having to say, oh, hi, y- you like my work? Uh, cool. Right, right. And so, every th- experience I had that wasn't as a complete embarrassment felt like a victory to me, so like, I guess that's why my spirits were so high the whole time. Mm-hmm. There, were, there, were, there were multiple moments... Uh, uh, where I did something that I wouldn't have done last time, like when I saw the Susie from Delta Rune cosplayer, and I was like, I'm gonna go compliment her, because last time, oh, I, that was the, a perfect the, comparison. To yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, the very distinct one. moment where I think I, I don't remember who, who of us saw mm-hmm. the last BronyCon. There was a cool Raven cosplayer, and she looked really good. And none of us wanted, none of us went over to say, Hey, that's really cool. <laughs> and we just looked at her <laughs> from afar. I mean, yep. she she knows it's really cool. Whatever. I know, but this time I felt I felt like I should I should do the thing that's more difficult, and I went over and complimented mm. her, and I got a picture, and uh, you know, th- it, that was that was cool, and I felt really cool about it. Way to go! Way and to I, go! You know, I felt comfortable walking around the artist alleys by myself, uh, instead of like staying with a group because it's mm-hmm. fine. I can meet people. I can find people. I know I have a phone that works in America now. I don't have to be worried yeah. about like. Not being able to call anyone, so yeah, like everything was great. I I oh and here here's my big thing, um, apsadventures.site, my webcomic website Ooh. thing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. I had a uh, punk the plush with me. Uh, rest in peace the Kickstarter for that, but it doesn't matter. Indeed. I had the plush, and I had a bunch of leaflets that I had made previously, and uh, there was like. F- uh, 25 to 50 of them and I tried my best to hand them out to as many cool people as possible. I think I have a list here of the of like notable ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lauren Faust I stood in line to get a signature but I said uh, fuck the signature, could you have this and you become a fan of me please? <laughs> uh, so that was cool. Hell yeah. Uh, I saw M.A. Larson scurrying around, acting like like blending in because he looks like one of one of them. Dude, uh, as, the, as the con ended, he was like the first guy out the door. We saw him like yeah. sprinting <laughs> off away, out he, of BronyCon forever in the back he was, of the mirror. He, I saw I, I, I saw him slinking around, and I walked up up to him and say, "Hey, could you did you have this?" And he's like, "Yeah, sure." So I, I don't know whether he's going to read that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. gave it to him. Uh, I found Saber Spark and handed it to him. I found uh, I love Compossible a lot. Famous uh, KP. Thank you, KP. Thank um, you, KP. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Riddle My Ass Batman showed up. I, got, I gave of one course. to him. Oh, yeah. oh man, we saw so ass, many man. capers with Riddle My Ass Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we riddled uh, so many asses. <laughs> uh, past Analysis, uh, British Ninja. Dr. Wolf, I gave one to. Oh, uh, Ka- Kazzy nice. said something about my conversation with Dr. Wolf. She was watching. And Dr. Wolf sort of leers over you with like condescending eyes and uh, like like 
like a, yeah. a, San- a mole Santa would if you're sitting he on his is, knees saying, I want... He has the eyes of a predator. He's like a skinwalker. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, a me- wolf, dare I say, <laughs> among the like, flock. <laughs> Dr. Wolf, all I want for Christmas is for you to review my webcomic. And he's like, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> Your I'll get webcomic. around to that. Ah, uh, okay, hmm. he lied. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, uh, APS um, Adventures? Uh, I've heard the name, but beyond yeah. that. Oh, um, the Ice Cold Water Man. Yeah, uh, he was, he was there. selling ice cold water. I gave him my leaflet, and he he didn't get it at <laughs> first. But I, I stood there explaining it. So it's like it's a comic. Like you can go, <laughs> you can read it. And it's like, hey, you selling anything on there? Uh, yeah, sure. It's like, okay, I'll give it a look. So you know, he he's oh. got it. Um, <laughs> as long as you're engage selling in commerce. something, as long as you're <laughs> yeah. uh, like, you know, I was advertising. He didn't understand advertising if there wasn't selling. It was like, uh, what are you I, selling? Ice cold uh, water comics. Man. What- so, like, Ice Cold cool. Waterman was involved with the perhaps the emotional highlight of the entire arc. Oh yeah, we'll, yes. we talk about we will get later. to that. Yes, I mean, yes, I did yes. give one to Misanthropony as well. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, and the, I, uh, the Chad, aka like the the meme Chad guy. Yeah, the cosplay it. Chad, whose name was mm-hmm. Nate, by the way. His name was yeah. Nate. That that was a really cool guy. There was lots of really guy cool ruled. guys. The only other person <laughs> I have down written down here is Ephraim. Uh, even though like he's not uh, any more. Uh, like uh, significant than, than the other people that I gave the leaflet mm-hmm. to. He's just like uh, the most prominent that I could think of. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I gave the leaflet to a bunch of RCK people and some friends of some other pony reviewer people. It was just all like, yeah, I am advertising. Lauren Faust is now a biggest fan of Bale Jape. Please go <laughs> read it. She's drawing Spe- fan art right speaking now. Of, no doubt. Speaking of RFCK people, let's talk about Slimehouse. Sure, oh well, sure. I, I want to talk about Slimehouse on the RCK that will be recorded, but we can we can mention brief here. Well, I yeah, I'm not Go I'm not it. gonna I'm not gonna mention everyone because there was a, a lot of people, and I'll, I'll forget yeah. someone I'm sure. But like there was a house of like uh like twelve or thirteen people just came along. In case you don't know, they were just thirteen RFCK like people. organization thirteen. Yeah, oh my God. it was. Fuck yeah, and they were <laughs> and they were they were not pony people. Like one of them had like ever seen My Little Pony before. They were just <laughs> there for basically an RFC probably con at at. <laughs> Brony. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure T-Fab has probably seen <laughs> My Little Pony man, once or twice. Uh, yeah, uh, it was so much. I was Dude, so glad was they, were, the, they made the it. They made it so much con. more fun. Yeah, yeah. By, by far. I mean, we had yeah, a yeah. literal gang around us like the oh, yeah. entire time we were at BronyCon. It was yeah. fucking sick. They the, were awesome. We, we the, could, the, the we could easily dominate Slimehouse. any group with with uh, with yeah. our like. And, Dr. And Wolf should have tried fucking and, with us and, and seen and what le- happened. And Levy Jevy gave me a bunch of uh, communist pins. He brought like a big box of like old oh, yeah. like pins from like communist states, and he just was like, "Yeah, just take as many as you want." I took like five. It was awesome. That's sick. It, it, was, it was so great because the people at Slimehouse are like OG RFCK people and like they know what's up and yeah. so it was great being able to talk to them. It, it, it was great being able to like, there's one, there was one point, I forget what the, I was the doing. Gen, the Gen Oneers, they were like all Gen yeah, Oneers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, I was like walking around, uh, I was trying to do something specifically. I might have been looking for misanthropony or I might have been doing something else, but the point is I didn't want to talk to anyone. And so there was some dude that was like, hey, Munchie, is that you? And I was like, yep. And I just kept on walking. Uh, at one oh, point. Okay. come on. <laughs> Dude, you gotta say hi or something. <laughs> no, no. I said like, "Yo, hey," and then I kept on walking. Um, but the point is, is that th- like that was like you know that's the PCP had experience, but like the RFCK had experience where where like I like real they say slime once, and then I'm all up in them and we just hang out all the entire time and it's great. It's a great time, mm-hmm. uh, and they were yeah, great to hang fair. out with. And, and and after the con on the last day at the pier, well, me Hippo and Ben and Cassie were all waiting for our Greyhound bus. We we're just hanging out in the Baltimore Harbor, and it was great. It was a great time. Just oh yeah, that, well that last night just like chilling on the harbor was the best. Yeah. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was rad. That sounds nice. Too bad I, we we left a little bit before that, me and Michelle. But you, yeah. you know, just uh, on this subject, there was just a whole bunch of people who came to BronyCon specifically to yeah, like see us. us. Yeah, there were many people who uh, fit that description. Oh, there was uh, people oh, who Ru- watched my stream. Oh, oh, Juicy Russell, Shack Russell, meat, Ru- dude. Russell was there. Russell was there. Russell we met himself Russell. in his in all his ghostly glory. If anyone watches my stream, Juicy Shack meat and his fiance, who uh, he proposed to live on my stream, or at least was updating as he did it. Uh, that was there. He, he they, those two were there. It was great. And in there, were, I can't remember everybody, but that was uh, it was. Pre- uh, th- this is just why Munchie's idea of going to BronyCon, like I, I had, I don't care about the ponies. I'm, I'm totally over it. But 
going just have a unifying place where people can meet which is kind of what the point of a con is yeah. in general mm-hmm. um it, it, honestly the main thing for me is that it really has my my gears were and thinking about some sort of like pcp meetup specifically for like all it doesn't it's not just for pcp heads but everyone in the extended pcp universe <laughs> uh getting together in one place would sure be would sure be a dope thing without the distraction of you know, outside forces like BronyCon or whatever. I am a little sad day, that it was the last one, and there's not going to mm-hmm. be another chance to go to it and, and see all mm-hmm. those people again. I mean, like, just the, go to like, Trotcon, yeah. dude. Trotcon's in yeah, October. You're right. Oh, what is that? Is some like far off, made up country like fucking Botsylvania <laughs> or some shit? Yeah, Maryland. I'm, I'm sick of hearing about all these <laughs> fake conventions and fake quarters of the world. Oh, shout out! Shout outs to Tarbuck Transom, the the yes. belt man. The oh, belt man. okay. Let me tell that story. I got, real quick. I got that okay. belt right here. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, it's fucking sick. I. Okay. All right. Listen up, lads. I've got the story pulled up right in front of me. So let me just tell you real quick. So, so me and Michelle both. Uh, just as a pre- preliminary thing, we both cosplayed like most of the days, and so Michelle cosplayed as Keg Standard, Phantom Horm, and he made it to BronyCon. One Brony Curious was there live as a Rule 63 gender swap version. Way to go, Michelle. Tom lives on through you. Rest his soul. Um, and uh, so I was there. I don't know. I did like a Keg Standard thing, whatever. But okay, the biggest thing was. I was there in a N8 Slime Corp executive suit, yes. mm-hmm. wielding my katana, my shinai. It was glorious. And you made it was those. Great. And you made those. You made those paper pins for. Oh, everyone. of course. Yeah, I made yeah. a bunch. I made myself slime one, corp pins. One of to which I, ga- I gifted to uh, Misanthropony, of course. Indeed, indeed. The, as a the, show, the... as a show of good faith, <laughs> it was it was wonderful. Um, and uh, okay, so 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 one, d- I'm wearing my fucking suit. I'm going out there looking like a million bucks, uh, Oblivion. I'm gonna need you to add some some visuals for this. Um, but uh, I look down like halfway through the day. Uh, I whatever. I stand up. I unbutton my shirt to walk around or something. I notice I'm not wearing a fucking belt. I I can't believe. My standard issue slime corp belt is nowhere to be found, and I'm looking, frankly, strictly unprofessional, and it makes mm. me want to kill myself. It's a nightmare. Uh, when all of a sudden, uh, who had, he had already happened to walk up to me, one one mysterious man with a large suitcase, I don't know what he's doing, he said, hey, Nate, nice to meet you, hey, I like your stuff, and I'm like, hey, thanks, what's up, man? I stand there, I say, oh my god, I forgot my belt, he says... Would you like me to make you one? He's uh, <laughs> This man, this man was a humble beltsmith. This was not a setup. This was not a scheme. This was not a ruse. I literally realized I didn't have a belt. He says, I literally will make you a belt on the spot right here. And by the way, I don't know if people remember this specifically, but this was on holy ground because we were in the area, like on the first and possibly the second Brony Cons, we're like, I mean, to me, this is holy ground where we all like hung out yes. the whole time. There was this yeah, balcony. And, and, yeah. It was it was at that oh, sacred the ch- spot. The chair, the chair place. Yeah. That's right, the chair no, place. Yeah. I know what you mean. Where yeah. you can overlook like the the main entrance. Everybody comes in and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. on this this hallowed ground where this event took place. Oh, and by the way, Michelle was unconscious from drinking too much on the floor for this entire episode <laughs> yeah. and missed the entire thing, but was right next to me. Hilarious. Uh, Oblivion, edit that in. She'll love it. Um, <laughs> so the point was, right there in front of me, he opens a suitcase, he pulls out his wares and his tinctures and his potions and his lashes and immediately goes to work measuring and like measuring my waist to know how much he needs and fucking folding the fabric. And he has this wooden contraption where Tarbuck Transom, of course, is his name. And what he does is, there's a link in the show notes to the whole Twitter thread. Go buy this, this man's fucking wares. He's a, a magic man. His shtick is he weaves, first of all, he's like a handyman of the stars. But what he does is he he uses this wooden contraption and the idea is he makes like uh, like cloth and belts and necklaces and stuff in the style that a pony would be able to from My Little Pony. This is like the conceit. Now, I don't know if this worked because he definitely needed fingers to do this, uh, but I, it's close enough. It's like a big wooden L shape that he like hangs the belt off of and like weaves it towards him like a fucking, uh, like a, like Don Flamingo puppeting the entire population of Dress Rosa from One Piece. Uh, and basically he just weaves a belt in front of me, like, like, a, like Charlotte's Web, and gives it to me. It's perfectly black, matches my suit perfectly. I put it on, and my honor is restored. Slime Corp is no longer disgraced on this day. He saved 
Slime Corp. He saved our profits. <laughs> he saved, he saved there's the no profits. greater. Yeah. There's no greater yeah. uh, a prize to be saved in this world. So thank mm. you, Tarbuck Transom. And people, unironically, go click the link to the Twitter thread I made about this. Listen, to my, just listen to this this one little phrase about how I'm describing it um, as he's weaving this belt. Okay, here's here's from the Twitter thread. It's and I say. With my puny monkey brain, I struggled to comprehend the IRL birth of a new universe I was witnessing. Alas, I could only gaze slack-jawed and pray that God would forgive this man who dared create such wonders in defiance of his law. This was me witnessing <laughs> the belt being woven before my eyes. Scroll down. Click, I, I have links to like his, his fucking cards and stuff. If you want a, a holy relic of a belt or a necklace or, or like a wristband or whatever... Look up Tarbuck Transom. He's your man. He also, He's a god. Um, He's a he saint. also gave me and Munchie uh, Ponut pins. Yeah, after yes. this, he gave you guys uh, and if pins. If you don't know what that is, uh, Ponut is a horse butthole. Oh, my God. Oh. It's funny. Oh, he that's asked, what those were. He oh, asked me. Uh, Tarbuck, He's he was like, such a pure man until this he, very he, moment. He, shows, he, he takes out a satchel, right? He takes out a small <laughs> satchel containing who knows what. Yeah. And he says, like, um... I don't know. And he just says, like, I'm like, oh, what's the... I, I made some joke about... I don't remember what I said was in uh -huh. the sack. And he's like, actually, it's full of horse buttholes. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And uh, so he just... Ooh. He takes them out. And he's like, here you go. And these little, these little pins, these little buttons. Um, of just horse buttholes. Uh, 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 mother and daughter. Uh, yeah, Twilight yeah. You, you Sparkle got Twilight, and Velvet. Got Twilight Velvet. Yep. And Twilight Velvet. And uh, he gives us each one. For and I'm like, uh, all right, sick. And I wore it for the rest of the con. And uh, also, uh, the first day, like, first thing that happens, before we saw uh, Chris Chan. Oh, yeah, we all saw Chris Chan. We got met Chris Chan. I got pictures with, uh, with um, the lady herself. And, and Christine. Mm -hmm. Christine. Um, fuck. Wait, what Where's was my I? Chris Chan still? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. Were you talking yeah, about yeah. Tarbuck and the, the uh, pussy yes. okay. Thing? So he, um... Well, uh, the, oh, the button. No, first thing that happened before that even happened, like, right through the door, someone puts a sticker on Munchie's back that says, I love Ponut. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know who is, did this. I don't know how the, it happened. But, the heart, but instead of a heart for love, it's a pona. It's a bow. Oh, of course. So I like. So you take it off, and I take that shit, and I slap it on the back of my of my phone, and it's still there. That's like Ew, my my eye my eye my eye ponut ponut sticker is uh, <laughs> gonna be with me for a long, long time. You know, I a, hope you're a, happy. a sales spiked I'm for our boy so Tarbuck happy. when I started telling the story, but they've plummeted back down to zero. No, as a no, no, don't worry, develop. don't worry. He was a hero to me as well because, see, like yeah. I came to like uh, in the uh, vendors hall. I was at mm -hmm. this place, and you know they had prints. And I'm like, oh, I want that prints. And the guy at the vendors thing was like, oh, okay, here's a ticket. Come back in a half hour, so I'll print it off for you. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're All telling right. me I got a I'm, I was just about to be out of this hall. I got to come back now in a half hour. Every other every other booth has prints mm -hmm. at the ready. You didn't warn me that I'd have to wait for your yeah, ass. So yeah. I'm I'm steaming mad. I'm steaming mad. So then I come back there a half an hour, and he still hasn't finished my print. I'm like, how long does it take to print off a picture of a Fluttershy, you son of a bitch? I'm fucking, I'm furious. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm going to lose my fucking shit. <laughs> but luckily, Tarbuck happens to also be at that same booth. And he's like... You know what? This is bullshit. I'm gonna get you your print right now. And he like rushes <laughs> off to the printing machines, and he just does it himself in like two minutes. And I'm like, Incredible. what a what a hero. And also, I left my energy drink there, and he kept it for me. He didn't pee or Aww. poop or spit in it or anything. I as far as you know, he saved Speaking it. Speaking of leaving energy drinks, Munchie, I left my fucking berry quake in your bag. It's still in there. You better fucking guard that thing. And also, he ben. got me a belt as well. <laughs> I like I just saw him. I ran into him another time and he was wearing a belt and it was like a, a red and gold like Lannister colors custom belt with like the Lannister Sick. symbol belt buckle and it looked really cool. And I just like absentmindedly like, like, hey, man, that's a cool belt. And he's like, you want it? It's yours. And I'm like, what? And he just took it off and gave it to me. <laughs> and so now I have a cool Pants belt Pants around well. his ankles and waddled <laughs> off. <laughs> truly, the, truly the element of generosity. Oh, um, that's a hero so of the convention. That's so true. <sighs> he really was. Uh, we um, should literally do. You know what, Tarbuck? We should like. We should like partner with him. Make like PCP brand belts. Like the PCP belt oh brand. My. We can go for him. That's a fascinating that's a, that's idea. A, that's, a, that's a swell idea there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, custom, custom um, made. Custom order. Hey, let's talk real quick about the uh, the the live action gang warfare that took place because uh, okay. there were some highlights of that of that exchange. 
uh, specifically me, when I fucking killed you, Ethan. Yeah, you think I'm gonna let this go? No, I fucking took a picture of you and you're dead. I was literally Solid Snake. I, okay, there was a gang warfare going on between the killers and the rowdies, obviously. Mm. And uh, it, it, it was photo, what, what do you call it? Picture tag or photo tag or something? It's called, I mean, it's you, you have to IRL shoot the violence. other player with well, yeah. a camera. But it's based on picture tag or something. You, you post a picture, you, you post it in the Discord chat, and whoever does it first, then your dad. Like, if it's they an post elimina- one of you. It's an elimination challenge. It, that's right, that's right. So, so okay, Kazzy won. Yay, great for you, Kazzy, you piece of shit. But uh, uh, better than that, more interesting. Who, who, who got the picture of you, like, bolting? That was Kazzy. Yeah. That was, yeah. Okay, that's what I'm getting to. So <laughs> yeah. I, I kill Ethan. I'm literally the sneakiest man. Let me just paint the picture real quick. This is going on for, like, an hour. I am I am hardcore camping in the dealer's room. It was great. Uh, I'm standing at this one great little uh, uh, corner where I can see... Uh, a, b- a bunch of access points to the ki- to the fucking dealer's room, and I've got my eyes peeled. The problem is, I don't know any of these fucking unpopular, no name fucking rowdies. Who the fuck even are you, people? Develop a YouTube presence already. Um, <laughs> if you, that would be really convenient. Um, also, real quick, how come the rowdies didn't like post their pictures in that chat the way like all the killers did? That seems fucked up. What are you up. talking about? What are you talking? Well, all about? the killers right Explain before we right started now. posted pictures. Why didn't the rowdies do Be- that? Because we had all sized up each other right before it started. You weren't there at the beginning. And you weren't listening to the rules, which would have come true. in handy specifically for you because you would have been able to get a lot of revives because you. That's were in the definitely true. I would have run. There and was got a whole a picture section of, of the stream where mm-hmm. we like take like we like look at each other to know what each other looks like. Okay, well then why did all the killers specifically go out of the way to post their pictures? Because a, right. a bunch of a bunch of we because a bunch of new people got recruited yeah. and they had to post their pictures as yes. soon as they were recruited. Exactly. <sighs> Okay, fine, fine. Okay, but but point is, uh, uh, so I was just camping and whatever. Everyone's dying. I'm watching in the chat as people are dropping left, right, and center. Ethan, I see him coming around the corner. He's looking. He's in hardcore maximum gamer mode. Mm-hmm. He is. He is. He is crouching. He is stalking. He is hiding behind things. He's got his peepers popped, looking in every direction <laughs> simultaneously. But that fool, he dips into the bathroom, and I knew, I knew this was my Chansu. So I just go, I go to the corner, around the corner as the door leads out back into the dealer's hall, and I camp there in darkness, praying. He doesn't look around the corner. He doesn't, as we say in the biz, check his six as he leaves the bathroom, and he did not, that fool. And I get endless pictures of him leaving like a dunce. So that's how you do it in the big leagues, lads. Okay, but then um, then I see people being like, oh, I got to Steve is like, I got to get into the dealer's hall. How am I supposed to get into the dealer's hall? I'm camping there waiting to stop any fucking piece of shit rowdy who tries to get into the dealer's hall. And as I turn my back for one split fucking second, Kazzy literally cheating, having <laughs> revived already. Oh, f- quote, following the rules. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Suck my dick. Ugh. She comes back and she says, <laughs> she, I see her. And my phone is down. I'm looking away for one half a split fucking second. I see her eyes go wide with awe that she may have the chance to capture the rarest of beasts, me, Nate Bestman. And her phone goes up faster than mine can. So I know my only option is to sprint out of there and pray some of these colossal land whales will block the line of sight so I don't get captured. But alas, despite my incredible speed, Oblivion put this on screen. It just, it just wasn't enough. And she got me. And uh, you know what? Good, good kill, good kill, Kazzy. The, the, and that's a great image, picture, nonetheless. The, it's a really the good image picture. of her getting you is so incredible because you are just mid sprint. You yeah, are it's like a gazelle, <laughs> Galilee, <laughs> Savannah. Uh, let me post it in the fucking thing. There it is. There. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the caption is simply <laughs> "That feel win." That feel win. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, people are going and they're posting all kinds of things. Uh, that feel when someone mentions Yang Gang. I think a frame posted that. Uh, I don't yeah. know. That feel when someone criticizes <laughs> capitalism. You know, he's there. The boy is there. Oh, this is me in my keg standard cosplay, incidentally. Oh my god. Um, this is so Look at my, my foot is incredible. off the ground. I'm clearly pivoting on my left foot. My yeah. muscles rippling as I'm speeding <laughs> off. It's like, you ever see that, um, that like anime? It's like a real statue. It is. It is. You ever see that uh, animatrix thing of like that black uh, like racer guy, yeah, that yeah. Olympic and, runner, and, and, and like, like his muscles are, muscles are rippling. Yeah, literally me, literally me escaping the matrix. I think if you look closely <laughs> at, at this picture, you can see me physically moving, breaking free of the confines. You, you of can this see picture. the lines of code around you as you're yeah, breaking that's free of right. the machines. Oh. But, but, but it wasn't enough, and a titan fell that it day. The rallies enough. took the victory. They, they did. Please they did. just it was analyze. A resounding victory. Please just analyze with me 
All three real life yeah. gang violences, rowdies have won. All four slime fests, rowdies have won. Is there a single victory the killers can point to in any yeah, regard? The mo- yeah, the moral victory the mo- every <laughs> single <laughs> time. <laughs> every single time, we are morally un- we are morally undefeated. No, wow. no, actually, because um, Ballard, who who got me, um, yeah. I, I I didn't like this guy was wearing like a pink and purple green like Hawaiian shirt. Mm. I didn't know him, and I didn't know whether he was a killer or a rowdy, but I took a picture of him, and I was uploading it, and he hadn't seen me. Um, and I asked him, you know, are you a rowdy? Because I, I can't actually tell. I, I'll i stop your picture upload if, if you're a rowdy. And he's like, yeah. He wasn't a rowdy. He was a killer. So he oh. clearly didn't win the moral victory hey, on that. Lying, the killers lying are now is besmirched. within the rules. Lying is absolutely what? fair game. <laughs> In this That's, gang warfare lifestyle, I don't know. Ours. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the moral victory to me. <laughs> I, 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 I want to have a call deception. out post, even to the RFCK people who knew this was happening for literal months. They couldn't follow the simple rules of wearing your gang colors, and it made me genuinely even I was wearing like, purple. Fucking I didn't fucking livid. know this was happening. It made me so mad that like no one paid attention to that rule, and I hate them all. So you're welcome <laughs> for being so bad at everything. That's fair. That's fair. Um, that was, that was, like, one of the highlights of the con. Before that, that me and Ben put up all these flyers that I had made for Slime Corp, and they were super cool, Dude, and they were some, there until yeah, the end yeah. of the con. They were there until the end of the con. It was great. Dude, post some A of those couple pictures. of them got taken down, but a few of them, like, most of them stayed around, yeah. and, like, we're still there at the very yeah, end. Yeah, I found a couple. It was like finding, yeah, yeah. it was like finding Easter eggs. It yeah. was cool. <laughs> Someone joined the server. At least one person actually joined the server because of them. That's, so. that's dope. That's dope. We, we did it. <laughs> we did it, boys. Mm-hmm. Um, it was <sighs> awesome. Yeah, dude, sick. <sighs> oh, what else is there to say? I mean, what else do we do? At, I mean, there's like there's like about? a ton of little stories and a ton. I, of I there's mean, tons. It yeah, just, it was one of those things where it's like you should have been there. I mean, all of the joys aren't uh, you know necessarily anecdotes. So there are certainly yeah. more. I mean, there are thousands that we could tell. But like mm. most of the fun was just being there with everyone. You know, being with all of our fans and all of our friends, just hanging out around Burning Con. It was if, great. I, if I had to give one prescription. If I think there's one thing to take away from this, it's that, look, I understand not everybody had the money to, like, fly to BronyCon and not everybody, like, we, we didn't promise we'd do anything, really. Like, there was no guarantee. I'd simply, like, whenever there's opportunities, try to take them. Because, you know, like oh, like we were saying, like, Ben and, and uh, Jesse and stuff, you know, they weren't looking forward. It just seemed like a pain. But, you know, the even the pain and even the financial struggle of, like, trying to scrounge up money to afford stuff like this, I'm not saying be irresponsible with your money. But, like, if you can do it, you know, the pain of going there and, like, the exhaustion is is temporary, but the memories, the memories last a lifetime. Yes. So, try, this, you know. This is definitely what I was thinking. I, I, yeah. I was, I was like, putting off making the decision about whether or not to go. I, I had made, like, mm-hmm. a half decision, like, ah, uh, it's expensive to fly. I'm just, yeah. go- I'm, you know, I, it, whatever. I'll meet you at Radcon. But yep, th- I, I kept thinking, like, am I going to, like, enjoy these memories uh, more or less than a couple hundred pounds. Yeah, like, really. Yeah. Like, money can be made back. I can't do this again, especially since it's the last BronyCon. Mm-hmm. And I do have some pony things I want to do, as in, like, yeah. meet Lauren Faust the first time. Indeed. So, like, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was definitely worth spending the money now and having fun. Yeah, it, For me, it was great. Sure. I got what I wanted out of it, which was a ton of really hilarious stories and, and exactly. wacky yeah. adventures. Even, and even, like, the little... Like just side missions, and uh, were hilarious and cool. Like finding the random like the the setup game machine and and, and playing the Wolverine game on NES, the LG the LJN oh, game. That was great. And it was in <laughs> Spanish for some reason. And Wolverine's Sick. going around. He has no claws in that game. He just jumps what around the these like multicolored pipes and 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 fights like starmen from earthbound and collects hamburgers for health <laughs> and at the end of every level sabretooth shows up and starts r- ranting at you in spanish <laughs> <laughs> he would do that <laughs> it was dope all, all, all the times when we walked to McDonald's and it was so fucking yeah. humid and hot, oh, we walked yeah. to McDonald's and Ben got like twelve hundred no, quarter is, pounders. This is, uh, and this, he didn't this eat is the, the this is the hack. Them. This is the hack. You go to McDonald's, three dollars for two McDoubles. Yep. That's sick. That's six dollars for four McDoubles. You throw the buns away. Six dollars for eight eight patties. It's pretty good. Well, I was with you until good. you I, said throw the bad. buns away. You monster. Fuck the buns. <laughs> oh, I know. Fuck I the know. buns. 
Poison. Uh, well, you know, it'll it, you it, will die. The thing about the, you know, this makes me think. I, I think about this a lot, but it's like, you, you know, a while ago, uh, I'm not saying it's on the same level, not exactly equivalent, but like years ago, I decided I don't want, like, for example, like a romantic, long distance relationship. If that's what like a relationship required, like for me, it would not be worth it. So like I, oh, a, a, like a, 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 a long distance relationship. Like, uh, some people oh, are right, happy okay. to do it. That's fine for them. I decided I don't want <laughs> no that. No one's happy but, like, to do it. They're all lying. I, no, yeah, nobody wants to. It's not the ideal, obviously. Some people think it's worth it. Hey, that, that's that's fine. That's for them. But, like, I really think, like, one of the main reasons why is because, like, I just think there's something kind of essential about being around other people who you care about physically. Yeah, And definitely. kind of, like, I, I think that these sorts of things, honestly, for us, like, as a friend group, as the PCP, I think it's kind of really important that we, too, get to together to kind of like when once we're together like and everyone when they're in real life facing each other no one's like as mean as they can be online or like snarky so it kind of just helps like refresh any negativity i don't know like there's been a little bit of bile between me and ben lately i don't know about you ben but i felt like totally cleansed i was just so happy to see you and hang out with you i was just yeah, like what are we even arguing same. about what does yeah, it matter it fine. especially it the with this group in particular because with this yeah. like friend group the uh the fact that we're like a podcast and a business is so toxic yeah. and poisonous and horrible. It can be, yeah. Like, yeah. like online across vast distances, like it's just a business and every part of mm -hmm. it sucks and I hate it every day and want to <laughs> kill myself. Sure. So like with you guys in particular, seeing you in person is vital and uh, I wonderful. totally agree. I totally mm -hmm. agree. And yeah. that's why... It, yeah. it, it reminds it, it me of like the actual for, like, friendship part in the of way this thing. that this doesn't. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we're like, like, uh, there was one night when we got back from Slime House, me, Kazzy, Hippo, uh, me, uh, uh and Ben <laughs> yes, Saint, that's and Ben Saint, oh, that's, that's, that's the ticket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, what, what, Mr. Pepperjack <laughs> hot dog, <laughs> yeah, wait, anyway, yeah, ate we, the whole time, just we, ate hot dogs we, we, and pepper we, we got back, <laughs> and, 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 Mc, and McDoubles we, we without back, the buns. We got back from Slime House, and it was like really late, and we were going to go to bed. But we just stayed up talking about the con, just talking, just cracking jokes, and we we're oh, talking, yeah. about, talking about Lion King one and a half and, and Tumba. So you know, you know, about dude, Tumba. Uh, yeah, yeah, and Tumba, a Tumba. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's why I we, and we had a fucking pillow fight, I think, as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we had a pillow fight. And while you guys great. were doing that every night, I was out wandering the streets of Baltimore, fucking homeless yeah, as dope. shit every <laughs> single night of the God, convention. Baltimore is so fucking scary. I got offered drugs like eight times. It's it's pretty, oh, yeah. pretty spooky. It's pretty spooky. It's not, <laughs> yeah, not a very I, I nice said, I said at area. one point, as there was a literal trash tornado blowing through the, yeah. the street. We experienced <laughs> that. Yeah. This fucking yeah. city makes Detroit look like the Emerald City of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Got, uh, my, got, my, okay. got, my, got my pink the, hair that... complimented a couple times, though, so that's pretty yep. good. Fair, fuck, fair. Fuck yeah, worth it. Oh, there's this. There's the oh, image. You can see my, fucking, you can see my transom moment. belt, too. Around, That's true, and you can see my like gut hanging out. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we we recreated the thing with with new friends and old. Uh, what a what a what a, a wholesome experience. And then like. we dumped him into the bay immediately afterwards. Yeah. Fucking yeah. limeys, please, fucking limeys. <laughs> as pointed out Splash. by another Twitter user, can we please look at Ben and analyze his, the way look, that I'm he's far holding on the that edge. Hippo. Look Where's the lever? Where am I supposed to get? Ben, leverage? is that a literal hover hand when we're trying to be holding up a man <laughs> My in other the hand? air? Yeah, well, yeah. What am I supposed to be like grabbing his wrist? Uh, possibly. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> my other hand is on his like shoulder. My right hand is just like, uh, what's the point of pushing on his arm? He's, what's the point? He's trying to give, a, anyway. trying to give a thumbs things. up. I don't want to fuck around with it. That I don't want to. You don't come between a man and his thumbs up. Uh, let me see. What else have we got here? Hey, I mean, there's. Hey, I'm speaking just going of hover hands, uh, let's let's talk about a, a real cool guy who would never stoop so low as to use the hover hands. Check out this sweet picture of me and Lauren Faust. Ah, uh, oh. yes. <laughs> Wait, where? Oh, there it there is. There it is. <laughs> my Incredible. Hand right around her waist, mm. like she's my fucking prom date. I don't give a fuck. fuck. Yeah. I do not hover hand ever, and I never will. You can't make me. <laughs> it's it's a mistake. It's a mistake. Yeah, it's great. It's great. What a beautiful image. Lauren, she's looking great. She's keeping it tight. <laughs> Nothing but salutes for her. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I, uh, what's she up uh, to now? At, at moments after, she was, she, she was like, hey, dude, who is that guy with you? Dude, A-Piece Adventures? Dude, would you know where I can get the merch? <laughs> where I can get the documentary, bro? What's that? Oh, by oh. the way, by the way, just, just in reference to our previous uh, friendship time discussion, th th I think this is the image for me that sums it all up. The, the bed snuggle oh, yeah. time. Yes. Yeah, that's... 
the, the ben, feet, pepper the jack in hand. And uh, uh, Ben, shoes on foot. <laughs> One day <laughs> I will have now. Now I don't know if everybody saw, but the saga continues. Uh, oh, let me fucking repost this here. Fucking, uh, you know, briefly in the in the continued sorties of shoe gate, I was briefly able to reclaim them, uh, and I feel that the moral victory is eternally mine. But uh, one day, you know, that's correct. I, 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 I just want to say that you it's know, a temporary like, like in the of power, in this foot image. Yeah, mm, mm. <laughs> the, the, this foot image was great because it gave birth to the two mo, you know, the two dualities yeah. of man. You know, the Nate Souls and the Munchy <laughs> Steppers, which will be in internal uh, conflict till the the heat death of true. the universe. Very true. Very <laughs> true. Mm. Yeah, God, I kind of regret rude. keeping my socks on, honestly. That's the right I feel, thing. I to feel do. left out in 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 the foot fetish uh, community. <laughs> yeah. It's the Christian I thing to it. do. Uh, oh, you know what? While we're just saying nice things in general, uh, I believe uh, Ben, correct me. It, it was it was Hargadeen. Hargadeen gave me this wonderful United Federation of Planets. Uh, That's right. Incredible. And, I, and ben, I wasn't supposed and I wasn't ben supposed to tell the beans you that it was her, but uh, I did. In defiance and, uh, now of I'm, your now command, I'm outed. Now this I'm is outed like my as favorite a, as a liar and a cheat. This thing is so sick. I love it so much. It was such a nice thing. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Thank you it's so much. Cool. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Oh, uh, can we talk just a little bit, a yeah. little bit about um, the TF2 analysis anarchy panel? And yes. the chanting and mm. the and the adoration this huge crowd of people have for the we worst thing I've ever table. seen. We went to the table in the vendors hall. They're, okay, mm. I don't know why this exists, but they had a fucking table dedicated to selling analysis anarchy merch. Where's and, my I mean, tune it's, it's critic? No God damn it! I want my fan, tune credit. Phantom Horn was not represented. He was He's not. Been, he has been erased from history. He has as his tune critic. Same. Tragically. Tragically. Oh, you know what? Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Yes. related to that, I just want to say that they gave analysis of anarchy like a huge panel, like everyone showed up to it. You know, they had their whole like booths, and you know, like bum fuck nobody has had panels. We tried to apply yep. for a panel, and they wouldn't even respond to us. They didn't say like, no, sorry, you couldn't do it. The they fucking wouldn't guy, even the fucking say guys that they like, did the nothing. How to be a furry panel? Who literally had no idea what they were doing yeah, and said doing. so immediately. They got a panel somehow. Yo, yeah, let, let the, just... the fucking brony drama uh, panel, w which was just like a it bunch sucked. of like complete nobodies, like reenacting a Discord call where you could, where everyone had a shit <laughs> mic and they didn't know how to speak. It was about that level of quality. <laughs> yeah. Well, real quick, like I missed the. Oh my god, I totally lost my train of thought. What were we just talking about before that Do you thing? Have to analysis no getting oh, yeah, panel. Okay, us not I was gonna ask. Panel. Like, could we just for the for the era? This is like the last time we'll discuss it. Cause like I feel like we just fucked up. Like, okay, the thing was I didn't sign on to confirm I was going to BronyCon until like like two, maybe three months ago. And you had already tried to get a panel, and like Digi never came. Tom intended yeah. to. I don't think he was involved. Like, how did that go? And like who was involved with it? Well, I, yeah. That the, there's two what things. Was, like, was it just you? Because, like, frankly, Munchie, you were never particularly well known. So, if it was just being like me, Munchie well, wants a panel. I, yeah. No, no, no. No, nay, it wasn't like, hey, it's me, uh -huh. Munchie Shatsky. Can I have a panel? It was me on the Procrastinators channel explaining who the oh. Horseshoe Crew was and that we okay. were the Horseshoe Crew and saying, can the Horseshoe mm. Crew get a panel? That's okay. what yeah. my explicit words. And, and it wasn't and, just and, that. And I mentioned, like, everyone mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. would maybe Yeah, that didn't, yeah, that it, didn't it, get it, a panel, but, like, the Brony Drama got a panel. What the I, fuck yeah, was that? Know. Yeah, we and, went and, to and not, it. It was man. embarrassing. It was not only the like the horseshoe crew. I also uh, applied separately for like a pony cast panel. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, right. right. That. There's no uh, reason actually, the pony cast shouldn't have gotten it. Yeah, but That's it's true. a pony show that was like kind of up to date. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. they did get back to me. They just said, "Sorry, we're fully booked." And was I did it, it really early as well. Was it like no, late? No, I did it as no? soon mm -hmm. as like it was open for for like a submitting panels. Well, that is very so surprising. They must have just made just an editorial decision that they wanted pony. Maybe they just really wanted like the most active people, even if they're like terrible Discord called drama whores. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, you know, I was looking for FNGR's panel the whole time and I couldn't <laughs> find it. Man, I wanted to get up to date dude, on the drama. Okay, but <laughs> well, dude. Okay, well, speaking of FNGR, we're going gonna, we're gonna to repeat this entire story in the RCK, but I want to say it here because Please. it is legendary. It is okay. fucking incredible. The saga of us trying yes, to find this Yes, yes, we need to hear it. So, 
I, I, I want to say, in case you are unaware, and you should be aware, because if you aren't, then you're a fake fan. <laughs> me and Ben, on our Fuckers Cop Killers, on our famous Frog Fractions episode, called out Mini a Pony Indeed. YouTuber. And in response, Misanthropony, a person who I don't even think we mentioned by name, I think we just like mentioned like his friends, and he got upset, and he made a, a, a vlog about us. In fact, he's, he's probably listening to this right now. Um, uh, hi, Map. And... We, he made a very funny video that me and both thought were very was very funny in, in response to us, and we thought, haha, wow, silly. And in this video, he states that he will kick Ben <laughs> in the dick at <laughs> That was a did. threat made yeah, against Ben. That's true. And, and, and since then, we had already like 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 not we had already like cooled off and like mellowed down, and we had already talked to him, and everything w- was fine. But still, that idea of kicking Ben at the dick at Brinkon was such a persistent idea in the back of our minds that we knew we had to meet meet him and get this to be real in any capacity and so we were trying to hunt down map and the first time that we saw him we were right up next to him me nate and a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. like jesse was there hippo Kaz, i think i think everyone was there besides ben we're in a big group full of like 40 fucking people all just walking down the street in the middle of like baltimore and we saw him walking up to us we said hey map he walks past us. Like, like he was walking up to us. He's past us now. Misanthropony. Misanthropony. Keeps walking. Goes across the street. Misanthropony. It's us. It's the PCP. It's Hippo. It's Jesse. Like, turns around. Gives <laughs> us a limp thumbs up. Walks away. A limp Does not thumbs say up a with his, to us with his infinity time. gauntlet. That he had <laughs> yeah. on the whole convention. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, we, 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 we tried to talk to him and he wouldn't pay attention to us so now we think okay something's fucking up there's something going on right now he is probably terrified of us he probably thinks there's like, a literal gang with, with Munchie a literal cadre. gang of rowdies yeah. and killers yeah. Yeah. right there yeah. With, 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 yeah with these rowdies and killers behind us all these people wearing gang colors just waiting <laughs> to fucking pop they're just waiting for the go ahead to tear fun. him limb from limb from you Munchie yeah, <laughs> can't blame him. Uh, and, and, and so we we tried to find him, but we couldn't find him. And then the last day, we did. I guess there was nothing to fucking do at BronyCon. There's not a goddamn thing yeah. we want to see. It was nothing. So we want to see him more than anything else. So we dedicate the entire other day to us trying to find him. If Fremen Ethan stake out the entire Vanillaire's Hall, we like check his Twitter update and we like look at his last tweet to find out where he is. Okay, it was Miss Lauren Frasco. Okay, we saw him going here. Okay, all right, block this interest, block this interest. We'll be able to get him. We're gonna like do like a fanning sweeping motion, try and get him out of the Vanillaire's Hall and try and get a picture of him. Can't do it and so we're like dejected trying to find him santa but he's like a skittish gazelle <laughs> trying to escape our lion's claws at every moment like he knows that like the, the hunt is afoot and he will not let us stomp down on his chest and so we're dejected walking around going to panels and then we meet uh, a Mr. British Ninja. And Mr. British Ninja is the person who replaced Hippo on TF2 Nestless Anarchy as the Red Spy. <laughs> and so we talk, start talking to him. And, and we're just like, like, you know, hey, how's it going? What's going on? You know, what's up, bro? And then we mentioned that we're trying to get Miss Anthropony. He's like, oh, you want Miss Anthropony? Why don't I just call him? And then we have a guy on the inside. We have a guy uh, on, on, like, in the uh, the TF2 Nestless Anarchy. We have him in the analysis pony YouTuber sphere. We're going to be able to get to a like, contact in lure and literally trap and deceive <laughs> Miss Anthropony quick aside, into allowing uh, us to take a picture Quick with aside on that. Uh, he, he showed us his Skype chats with Miss Anthropony, which mm-hmm. was just a long string of Miss Anthropony saying, Hi, 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 oh. hi, hey, hello, oh. hey, you there? <laughs> hi. Oh, which was really oh, funny. Sick. I- I didn't. I didn't see that part. And and, and then, by, by the way, British Ninja was like, yeah, cool. he, he, he seemed, he seemed that good. Guy. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 so uh, we we get him to call, and so there's a, a a meeting arranged after closing the ceremonies. Like this is like the very 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 tail end of the con. It literally just ended. Yeah. Khan was ending right at that this moment. This is immediately yeah. the the yeah. aftermath yeah. of the closing ceremonies, and everyone was pouring out the door. And we all knew like, there was no other. Do- he had to be in there. There was no option. Mm-hmm. He was there. And, and, and so and so we get a meeting. At, at first, we're gonna try and like literally like we've set up like like yeah like we have centuries, centuries yeah. to like like spot him. Yeah, but but eventually we're like, no, 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 let's stream on this, let's just wait outside, you know, Burst Ninja will tell us when he's coming, and so we wait outside the doors, BronyCon literally ends, like, the bell rings and the students mm-hmm. shuffle out of school, and then, like, one of the first guys, Miss Anthropine, with his Thanos glove, and then we Did all, we like, that like the surround him in a, a circle. Giant Thanos yes, yes. A- every but very yeah, yes, appearance Thanos he girl, made? Yeah. yeah, okay. I thought. That really, added a, lot, that really added a lot so, of so, texture to the whole experience. It sure did. 
So, so, so we surround him, and, like, Miss Heather Horn, like, gets, like, scared for a moment, and, like, starts to, like, grovel at our feet, like, I'm so sorry for what I said to you, <laughs> he but did I'm so seem, sorry. He did seem genuinely <laughs> afraid when we, conf- when we, when we appeared I mean, we before we all him. surrounded uh, him, and Jesh, and we uh, went, nightmare, 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 nightmare! Yeah. So that was an odd choice, but... <laughs> and, 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 and then Ben, like, the benevolent deity he is, says, rise, <laughs> peon, and then smiled upon him gently. Uh, and, 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 then, and, then, and then he rise with tears in his eyes, that. and we patted on his back and said, you're among friends mm-hmm. here. And we embrace. Um, and, and then the roller coaster of emotion I'm, I'm with Miss Anthropy Party was like went from like pure like terror at like I can only assume at like the literal death he thought he was about to experience. Like, most likely. Actual yeah. terror from little like like the daggers of the furies that were about to go inside of him. Went from just joy to seeing us. And we got so many pictures with him. It was great. And we recreated, you know, the kicking each other into the dick. Look, the look, I, 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 look I told him, I was like, hey, I told him, I was like hey man, you know, there's one, like I've been looking forward to this moment and I just just the thing that I want more than anything is, can we please get a picture of each other kicking one another in the dick? And, and he was super. Yeah, he was. Dude, he so went like, yeah. yes, and it went, yeah. The, there was a literal crowd cheering yeah, the for crowd this moment. Literally went. We cannot yeah. express it, how it, 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 it was a crowd was. of. It was a crowd of all of us, you know, all of our people. But the, because BronyCon was ending, everyone was coming out. There was just yeah. like loads of people yeah. around this who were also cheering because, like, it's ceremony. a thing that's happening. Yeah, this was the emotional yeah. climax of BronyCon, uh, bar uh, none. And and and. I, and we can't we can't describe how joyful it is that we finally found Miss Anthropony that we're doing this iconic moment that he's happy that everyone's happy all of our friends and allies that is there you know all the people that we met all of our fans and friends and all the people the new people we met there like like past analysis was there uh uh what uh what, I just said his name Fucking Chad. Was there. it was all coming to a close this was the end of Burning Con and then something that I cannot believe happened we need to do some backstory here at every Burning Con. There has been one figure that's preluded <laughs> all of the conversation between the upper and lower societies of Brancon. This person has single-handedly funded and, you know, armed the Brancon masses. I'm talking about, of course, about ice cold water, one dollar guy. Was cold water, one dollar. <laughs> so there was a dude, shirtless, selling water every single brink on. He became a national icon, a treasure, if you will. A, he went a, a beyond. National he, be, treasure. he went Nick beyond the steal this man. He's he's an yeah, he's an urban superhero. This guy, like Static who, Shock or Luke Cage. <laughs> indeed, indeed. L- l- Literally, and so this guy, who's an icon of Bernicon, uh, that completely amplifies all that Bernicon stands for, all of its ideals and <laughs> virtues. He just out of the blue comes up to us. He to just ben like and, runs and, and right Pony into the center of, of the big like circle yeah. of people that are like cheering and like clapping and stuff, and just like hooting and hollering. Yeah. Do we have yeah. a picture and, of that? Someone must have a and, picture, and, right? And, I don't know. And, and, and and so this spirit of BronyCon past, present, and future gulp <laughs> comes into us, and we get a picture of Miss Anthropony with the ice cold uh, water one dollar <laughs> guy, and it is just the encapsulation of all of that period of culture yeah. and history. This like closing ch- uh, chapter, all of like all that Miss Anthropony represents, like all the analysis of uh, My Little Pony YouTubers, all of the cesspool and stuff like that, but just that sort of like simple naive and like simple just like joy that they experience for the show just rubs off on you and that ice cold water one dollar the institution of mm-hmm. baltimore maryland you know the hustling in the streets and the grime and 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 that sort of like cess just all accumulates into one giant glob of just i can't just describe it it was so serene it was just completely Tran- graceful this was could Indeed. not be written yeah it, it's could not be written life is stranger than fiction it was incredible it was literally amazing you, uh, yeah. it was yeah. definitely the, the picture of that it was a magical where's the picture of that shit it was the site of cold water guy brony count was a, a weekend of, of and, that, and then and then miss anthropony immediately called his mom and told her about it I wouldn't blame yeah. him. It was it was a weekend of great. And he and he, and he wanted to know who had like pictures. Uh, who if anyone had been filming when he had initially come out because he wanted to like show his mom the video. Aww. <laughs> yeah. I know some people were at least parts. Let me tell you, um, my greatest defeat in life, the the site of my greatest failure. It was when it was at that end part when uh, ice cold water guy was there. Uh, first, like Miss Anthropony came up to me, 
and and started like oh, he started I, yeah, apologizing to me like hey for everything I've ever said to you I deeply apologize I'm like what the fuck did you ever say to me I don't fucking even know yeah. who you are man so so like <laughs> so so and then Miss Anthropony starts talking to me about Kingdom Hearts and stuff and I'm like okay I'm talking to this guy about Kingdom Hearts but while that happens you know the ice cold water man stuff is happening he's coming and he's taking pictures with everyone and stuff and he like he goes to take oh, a picture God. with Kazzy. And he's like, who has, a, who has a phone? Who has a camera? So I take out my phone to take a picture. And I take a picture of Ice Cold Water Man and Kazzy. And my phone is on like 1%. It's about <laughs> to die. And, yeah. and he goes, hey, hey, man, uh, uh, well, let me put my number in your phone so that uh, you can send me that picture. So I'm like, I'm freaking out. Like, oh, my God, this is my chance to have a real life superhero in my contacts for life. I'm literally <laughs> going to be friends with Ice Cold Water Man. And he had just got done telling Ben all about how, like, if someone messes with his friends, he'll kill that it, person. I asked him. Yeah. I asked him. I said, I was like, excuse me, sir, Mr. Ice Cold Water Man. I, I have to ask. Because I've, I know I'm a big fan of your work, and I just need to know: Would you consider yourself a rowdy or a killer? And then he uh, goes on this long, t- and he goes like a weird, like he goes tirade, on this long yeah, tangent like- about like how, like you know, he, how, like he's like you know a peaceful person, but like he'll like he'll like defend someone if he has to, you yeah. know. And I'm like, okay, okay, but would you say rowdy or killer? And then he just does it again, basically. Mm-hmm. And then it's a tough choice. you know what? You know what I realized? Mm-hmm. I should have been like, okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, do you like pink or purple better? That's just sort of uh, how yeah. I finished. <laughs> that's but true. I forgot. Yeah. He didn't give an answer. So whatever. I mean, anyway, saying like he, he, he definitely thought you were asking, ha- have you murdered anyone? <laughs> yeah. With the killer thing. Yeah. 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 I know. I look, obviously, obviously I just was hoping I, I just wanted him to say something. I just wanted an answer, of but course. now we'll never know. I, he's friend know, we'll to know. Juvie, Killer, even the lowly Stay Deads. He's alike. a filth. You're saying he's a filthy yeah, yeah, centrist, no. is what you're saying. Mm, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps yeah. so. So, wait, wait, so. So Jesse, yeah, you so, try so, him in so, your so, yeah. I'm safe forever because this is protection. This is my chance to have my own personal superhero in my yep. contacts forever. But my phone is on like one percent battery life. It's about to die. Miss Anthropony is like right here in my ear talking about Kingdom Hearts. And and I, and I'm like and I'm trying to like find my contacts on my phone, which I've never fucking used ever. Cause fucking so like I yeah. can't even find the phone. Then I can't find the contacts. I can't find like where to make a new contact. And I'm freaking out because my phone's dying. Miss Anthropony's going off about Kingdom Hearts, and I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. And then my phone dies, and I miss my chance. And then fucking ice cold uh. water man chews me out like it's my fault. Like I'm incompetent or something. Like oh man, you don't even know how to even find you. And I'm like, listen here, ice cold oh, water man, you son of a bitch. Shit. You know, <laughs> you know. It, it, it just figures, you know, all weekend, everyone's coming up to me and shaking my hand, taking pictures. Everyone gets to meet their fucking hero, their idol, endless chess. But when it comes time <laughs> for me to meet my hero, you know, everything has to go no. wrong. I got no phone battery. It's fucking dying. I can't find my contacts. I... Miss Anthropony's talking about fucking Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I... freaking out. I'm having a panic no. attack. I I, to- uh, I totally empathize. Uh, I totally empathize because before that we had met up with uh, with Sarancha and talked about um, me being on Christeries and stuff, and like mm. she had been like, um, you know, here I'll send you a text, like like add me to your phone, and I also realized that I have no idea how to use the contacts menu in my phone, <sighs> and I'm Boomers, trying to man. fucking figure out how to add her, and I'm, but whatever. At least at least I struggled with that like in privacy, yeah. like she wasn't oh, around yeah, to see me be me. like, oh uh, oh wait wait a second wait a second uh 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 where's the button? Oh, uh, yeah. It was like out in the open. There was like spotlights on me, like under the heat of the sun. There was a huge yeah, crowd, rough. everyone looking, everyone disappointed in me. I scold Waterman <laughs> cutting a fucking promo on how incompetent yeah, I am. <laughs> Such shame. Dude, me, like separately, Ben says to you, "Dude, you choked," and then and then later, five minutes later, I say, "Dude, you choked." Like like separately, independently of one another. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, meeting meeting heroes and, and and villains alike. You know, uh, as as we said before, I did meet Chris Chan. We all met Chris Chan. That was great. Really, really mm-hmm. nice. Really nice in person. Happy to take photos. Uh, interestingly, you know, Chris became such kind of just a staple. There were many times where Chris was just sitting, you know, alone in a, in a chair, just, Chris, you know, absorbing Chris the Chris was just the around, atmosphere. just like, yeah, just a, just a we chill. sat behind her in like a bunch of, of panels, like yep. right, but it's like just been rubbing elbows with, with Christine Weston I, Chandler I in the flesh. No doubt. I never, I never came across her. Really? really? Oh, I would have given crazy. her one of my leaflets. I saw her that's, like that's too five bad. five or six times, yeah. I bet Chris would have been into your shit. Um, yeah. oh, <laughs> maybe. 
I, uh, <laughs> don't I don't say that. Oh, but you know what? While, while I'm just bro. posting these, also got a picture with the only Pegasus sister, one Jenny Nicholson, who I quite uh, like. Yeah. I'm a fan of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. she's Sucks. cool. <laughs> nah, she's I garbage. Fa- I found her as well. Oh, yeah. Let me tell. Let me tell you this. Let me, let me tell you my Jenny story. Okay, we're walking okay. to the. We're walking to the. Brony, oh, who, who Ben uh, and I have worked with on brief bits before on Pony stuff. She was. But, she yeah. did lend her voice to T-Bap a couple times. On occasion, yeah. Um, I was walking to. Yes, I was walking to, we were walking to the Brony uh, drama panel and it was in like the other building. We had to go across the sky bridge Mm -hmm. and uh, she, she with like, is like with two other people. She just walks out from a hallway and I'm like, oh, it's Jenny Nicholson. I don't really want to talk to Jenny Nicholson, (laughs) but, but. I do. I am confused, and I am unsure whether this is the, the way to the sky bridge. So I just <laughs> ask her, like, "Hey, is that the sky bridge over there?" And she's like, "Yeah, we go through there to get to the Hilton." And oh I'm like, man, cool. <laughs> and then I keep walking, and then <laughs> fucking Nate is like, "Wait a minute, that was Jenny Nicholson." And like, run back. Yeah, and I run back, talk, and I got this picture. I got this picture with her right after Jenny that. Nicholson. Man, yeah, Ben yeah. is so much cooler yeah. than me, though. He doesn't give a shit. Had, That's I, so Jenny dope. Nich- Jenny Nicholson is guilty of the worst crime that a person can be guilty of, and that is being more famous than they deserve. Uh, okay. I can't think of anything that deserves a more scorn and derision. I don't that, know. I think enough. she deserves it. She's she's done some. That's the good. fucking dumbest. No, she, thing I said to her. She made. She's like friendship is witchcraft. <laughs> she made. Which made, she, made fr- she made friends. Ever. She made friendship is witchcraft, <laughs> and then she spent the next seven years sitting on a bed. Hey, look, look. That gy- I like look, that. Look, that. That's funny. That gypsy yeah, bard song from Friendship is Witchcraft is yeah. the instrumental basis for one of my classic songs. Crystal Ball. Yeah, Therefore, you, know, you know who wrote you know you know who wrote that? Griffinella wrote oh, that. Well, that, that. That is who true. Who gives a shit? I don't yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I also uh, had uh, uh, an encounter with with Jenny Nicholson after you guys had left yeah. because every every time you guys left to go back to your like nice comfy uh, like uh, affluent white people hotel room, I had to right. like hang around the convention center all night like a Indeed. like like Oliver and Company <laughs> in his cardboard box in the rain. <laughs> Let me, listen, it was it's hilarious. hard being uh, it's hard being an affluent white person. That bed was so soft; it had such oh. terrible lumbar support <laughs> that uh, no, uh, this is uh, gen- genuinely, genuinely. I was in pain the entire convention because the bed was too soft and it made my back hurt, and I can't fucking handle That's like rough. a soft. Yeah, rough. it's awful. It I, it honestly like kind of ruined like the first two days for me. Yeah, so, it sucked so, that. So bad. I had an in- and this in- and this was when I had my fucking depressive episodes, like sit on the floor with my head <laughs> in my hands, like oh episodes god, in your comfy hotel that, that sucks. having That's your not fun. Having, yeah. having your pillow enjoyable. fights. <laughs> while, no, that was later. That was later. Sleeping on the rocks and the streets next to a homeless Whoa, this dude. picture that uh, this picture Gib just posted of like Munchie Ben and Cassie and glowing with pink light. They must be at the rowdy yeah. uh, rough house wait, right wait, now. Where, this where? Was, Hold on. Look yeah. at it. It's in the, in the, in the chat thing right there. This is the New York layover. <laughs> My face. Oh, that's yeah. That's the. Oh yeah, yeah. When we were on the. When, man, I look so grumpy. Uh, when we were on the ride home, mm-hmm. uh, we st- we had a, like a three hour layover in New York, and we just fucking walked around Times Square. For, oh, that's like, New York. Uh, oh, that's cool. Dude. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, it was New New York at like three thirty in the morning when like everything was closed except for a McDonald's. Okay, that's great. But Jesse was in the middle of something. Yeah. So what, what were you saying, sure. Jesse? Oh, right. I just we had pizza. <laughs> we went to the. You, you and Jenny had um, pizza. Yeah. Oh, that's Wait, that's KP. Wait, why did you and Je- Why did you and Jenny have pizza? Well, Are you uh, sure you don't mean KP? Because that's KP. I was with both of them that night. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so that's um, cool. Because like the first night or one of the first nights, I don't even know. It's like such a blur. It's like fucking. It was yeah, like yeah. A, a ten months we were there or something. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the first night, you guys all went off to your hotel room, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna fucking wander around here for a little bit. So like as soon as you guys left, I ran into KP. And uh, we hung out, and then the next day. Oh, but behold, Jesse's uh, KP TF2 sticker from Analysis Anarchy <laughs> hanging off his leg. Uh, Incredible! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrible. I had, well, I had to Just buy it the because, worst. like, like to me, having <laughs> KP merchandise is the funniest thing in the world. Yeah. Like her stuff is so, fascinating. Like, is so like skewed towards young people, like little kids. Yeah. Like I've I've never made it through a KP video ever, and you know, like <laughs> I, I like. For the longest time, I didn't get it. And, like, one of the first Brony Cons is when I actually hung out with her for the first time. And I saw, like, all of her fans yeah. come up. And all the fans coming up to her were, like, actual little girls. So, I was like, okay. They're not an impressive bunch. Yeah, so I'm uh, like, okay, I get it. I get what you're... So, like, it's her content is just so, like, for kids that I, I find it hilarious. One, to... to proclaim myself an undying fan of KP. And two, to buy her merchandise <laughs> and have her sign it and stuff. Uh, uh, it's hilarious and cool. So yes, I did buy a cool KP sticker, which then I heard from her is not even like an official KP product. You didn't get any money for it. It was all the yeah, TF2 guys. True. So I got ripped Thank off. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Which oh, I wait, think no, all went to terrible. charity, I heard. So that's nice if oh, that's true. Fuck. Uh, 
Now yeah. I have to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, but then, uh, but then I ran into her again uh, the next night when she was coming out of her panel, and she came up to me and she's mm-hmm. like, "Hey, it's you! It's my favorite fucking guy. What's up? Let's go to the fucking uh, rave and 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 fucking." And I'm like, "Ooh, rave! That sounds horrible, but okay." Yeah. So yeah. we went down. We met up with Jenny Nicholson, Blizzard. and we were eating pizza and shit. And we went to the rave, and uh, it was a it was a fucking rave. That's for sure. And it was fucking. Oh, incidentally, J- Jesse played our dad, and Jenny played our mom. So dad and mom were united that, at last. That is dad true. finally Although, came home. I'm not completely certain that she knows who I am. Like <laughs> I, I, I've hung out with her hmm. before. I've talked to her. Huh. Uh, I don't know. She's she's never addressed me by name. I don't know if she you, knows. You Jenny or KP? Jenny, Jenny Nicholson. Jenny. They meet a lot I'm of sure. people. I don't know. No, KP definitely Man. knows who I am. Yeah, yeah. But uh. We should get we should get we should get Griffinella on the PCP. Is he? I th- I, isn't he like really popular? Should, you know, I've heard, con- I've heard conflicting PCP. reports about this, mm-hmm. but I've heard that Jenny was really horrible to him. I mean, I'd be interested. And to I hear want if that's and true. I want that to be true to validate my preconceptions. <laughs> Fair so, enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the rave, like, like the, the atmosphere coming out of the rave. I think you guys mm. should have been there because it was really something yeah. else. It was like the real climax of the convention because mm. people were coming out of that rave. It was like three in the morning. And everyone was just losing their minds in, like, the front hall. And, like, security was, like, trying to, like, okay, it's time for everyone to leave for the night. Get the fuck out of here. And, like, nobody was listening. Everyone was just, like, thrashing in the front lobby, like, singing pony songs. And and, <laughs> and I, like, I had a moment where I, I like, I found the, the perch by the fountain. And I, like, sat up and I perched there. And I sat, yeah. like, like, Indian style, like, in the Horseshoe Finale video. And I watched my hmm. fucking people come out in droves from the rave hall and just mm-hmm. like filter through the lobby and like singing and like this joyous celebration. And I just had this moment where I'm like, yeah, this is pretty fucking cool. Look at this shit. Like, you just yeah. like this, this moment of like, no one's ever going to get this. Like you had to be here. It's, it's like actually kind of a cool special yeah. fandom, even though it's weird and awful, but it's actually, <laughs> it's like, yeah. And I was like, I was just watching over my people like a, like a, like a lonely God. And it was mm. fucking cool. That's interesting. That's interesting. And then I went out and I and I walked like a mile to the hotel where the people said that they had a room for me and they mm-hmm. lied and I couldn't get in and no. they were all asleep. And so then I fucking was homeless all night and I was fucking wandering around Baltimore for like miles Just and miles. Just you had the real folk blues uh, on multiple evenings. I, I, had, I had the real Baltimore experience because I came to the city <laughs> yeah. uh, the same way I come into every city, which is not planning for anything. I refuse mm-hmm. to plan for anything. Mm-hmm. I refuse to book a hotel in advance. It's Life is more interesting that way. So Probably. So every single night after everyone was gone and it was time to like sleep for the night, I had to like find a hotel myself walking around the city. There were no hotels open anywhere mm-hmm. near the city. Uh, I had yeah. to like, like the first night I had to walk like two miles into the depths of the city into like the real ghetto, like horrifying, scary place to find like this crap ass hotel that was way overpriced. Yeah. And I, and I did that a couple nights, but uh, on the night after the rave, even that hotel was also booked and I couldn't find anywhere. And I was wandering on the city for hours and it was like, it, it was like four in the morning and I'm, and, and, and I just gave up. I was like at, around the convention center. I'm just like, whatever, the sun's going to come up in a couple hours. I'll just like lay down here on the concrete by the convention center and fucking sleep. <laughs> no one You're not alone. You're me. not alone doing I'm that not around alone. Baltimore. There is a, a person sleeping on every street corner in Baltimore. Uh, mostly like, you know, actual homeless people. Not, well, I am actually. Yeah. I was, but it's, <laughs> never mind. Uh, so, never right, mind. I'm right. just one of them, I guess. It, it, it really is the truth. So I'm just laying there on the cock. And like, I'm looking at my phone like, this, is there anyone who might have a place for me to stay? And I see that Ben's online. And I look mm-hmm. at it and I think to myself, I would rather die than ask Ben for help. So I put my phone <laughs> and so I, yeah. Good thinking. So, right choice. So I, so I get comfortable there on the concrete. And then uh, one hero, one, one noble superhero from my Patreon Discord, which everyone can get in for $5 on my Patreon. There's my plug. And so this fucking mm-hmm. hero from my Patreon Discord came by the name of Tabby Nickel. And he's like, oh, yeah, I have a room. Because a, there was like a group of people from my Discord who had gotten a hotel room. But the guy who paid for it, Bryce, could not make it to the convention. He had plane trouble. Mm-hmm. And he was really bummed out about it. And it sucked. Yeah, that sucks. But, uh, but there was a vacancy in the room. And Tabby Nickel's like, hey, I got this fucking room. So I went in. And I went and I slept next to a man for like one hour and he saved my life. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Sick. Yeah. We did it. We uh. Me, I would have liked to have gone to that raid, but rave. That yeah, sounded, me too. Like, that's that's something I've never done before. It me was and really Michelle cool. had a. Uh, we had an Airbnb that was like 20, 25 minutes away from the place. Like I, it, it, like I was, you guys were saying before. I just like at Radcon three, a lot of the most amazing times, and even uh, when we were at like Anime Expo, me, Digi, and Munchie, a lot of the best times are just like at night when everyone's just chilling and relaxing. So like, if we could have yeah. been there, yeah, probably no, would have been sure. pretty dope. But like, it was already full, and we wanted our own space anyway. So. Yeah, it, it was uh, definitely a rave. No, like yeah. I'm not, I'm not, Dude. I'm not like a dancer. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a reveler. I'm more of like a, <laughs> a I'm more of like an arms crossed standing there, just observing the other freaks and mutants having fun. Mm-hmm. That's my mm-hmm. fun. My fun is observing. So like, I, I, I will not dance at a rave. You cannot make me. If you try to make me, I'll kill you. But mm-hmm. at the end of it, when the guy came out and he played the Discord song. Even though yeah. it wasn't the Discord song, it was like a 2019 remix, which wasn't as good, but nobody seemed to mind. Uh, mm-hmm. So he came out and he played the song. And everyone's going crazy, and uh, and and KP, who for the most part uh, was also an observer, uh, she hands yeah. me like her Discord plushie, and she's like, "Here, here's the Discord plushie. Wave it around and dance." And I'm like, "You fucking goddamn bitch!" So I have this. Uh, so now I have this plushie, and I have to like wave it over my head like I'm part of this and I'm not I'm an observer and I'm mad about it <laughs> yeah you're it. better so I'm fucking so I have to figure out like some kind of movement for my fucking body to to perform so I I came up I, I invented this uh insane autistic uh I guess you would call it a dance but mm-hmm. like if anyone if, if it was caught on film I would delete all of my channels and disappear <laughs> I, it was like it was like part robot and also part T-Hawk from Street Fighter 2. You know how he has his elbows out and he's walking towards you like ready to do like a so, flying yeah. eagle dive. It was yeah. it was a T-Hawk robot and also like with Discord plush. And I just like, I'm like, okay, I have to keep doing this until the fucking song's over. Oh, Jesus. And it was, I mean, it was cool, I guess, is the point. <laughs> and, then that the, sounds, and then the song uh, like was over time. and I got the foot there you, you, you know there's one other person i wanted to mention uh who was at uh, radcon i mean fucking BronyCon, that i did not meet but i would have liked to if i'd known and that was contrapoints contrapoints actually showed up to brony yeah, she showed she showed up for like one day yeah and was uh, around just, if, just I, if i'd in, seen wow. her i would have liked to have seen her. Yeah, I heard that it's, it's I true a picture it's true. of her and jenny and, and beyond um, that beyond i heard that. about it later oh wait you you, you met her you saw her no, no, I just said, I heard about it later, and I saw a picture of her and Jenny. Yeah, that's right. Well, well, like, oh uh, 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 ContraPoints um, said on Twitter, what was this? This was like a week ago or something, said, um, uh, wow, Twitter shamed me hard for going to BronyCon. The stigma is real. And uh, thanks. Thanks for being on our side, ContraPoints. <laughs> thanks, for being an al- thanks for being an ally, ContraPoints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, an ally I care about. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, well, that's it. Mwah. All right, guys. Hey, check out, we could. Check out this sweet pic right, right, yeah, before we wrap sure, up. Okay. This is from the day after the convention. I was still in Baltimore for a day, so I was wandering around, and I decided to go visit the grave of Edgar Allan Poe and oh, uh, shit. And, and take a sip for my homie. What? There in my so fucking way. <laughs> there in my KP shirt, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sipping some fucking vodka. It was fucking wow. Dope. This is exactly what he intended for society to become. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what he died for. <laughs> Sick. That uh, that's incredible. This is uh this is postmodern, all right. <laughs> Dude, I hope there's like you know how there's like the Beetle Bronies, which just like take Beetle songs and make them like yeah, about My yeah. Little Pony. There should be like an edit of like the Raven, but it's just sentence about the Bat Pony <laughs> that you would only see. Uh oh, or, or Changelings. Uh, Edgar Allan Pie. Yeah. What's the what's that? <laughs> Edgar Allan Pie. Oh, it's cutie uh, fucking Pinkie Pie, but it's Edgar Allan Poe. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, hey, I, I don't know if Wait, you guys want to talk I, more I about BronyCon. One... I have a, yeah. yeah. I, I don't have anything about BronyCon, okay. but I do want to mention mm-hmm. uh, my travel home, because it was a slightly unusual. Um, so, uh, me, Munchie, Kezi, and Ben, we because my round-trip flight that I had booked going there, uh, the, the flight back was like at 6 a.m. on the fourth day, and I didn't want that. So I just skipped that flight, and instead I had a flight booked for um, the end of uh, the fourth day or something, uh, or maybe the fifth, in Boston. So I went back to Boston. We had a layover in New York, and that was cool. Um, uh, New York stinks, lol. 
I hate it. No, it was sick. Um, it just kind of sucked because it was three thirty. No, morning. I mean like literally, it stinks. It's oh, like it no, really that's stinks. true. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Okay. Point taken. Um, but uh, anyway, I missed check in at my flight when we went there. Um, I didn't realize for a... because we had hot pot. Yeah, it was hot pot was lovely. I really want to ha- to have that again. Um, but yeah, I didn't realize for check in for international flights you have you have to be there an hour early. And I would have like checked in earlier on my phone, but it wasn't working. So I was just thinking I'll check in at the airport, and it didn't work. And I got you know rebooked on a different flight, and it took a really long time. It was really stressful, and I didn't like it. Um, we thought you were gonna have to end up staying till the next day or something. I I thought so yeah. as well. It seemed I, I went, dire. Yeah, they they gave me a, a flight, and it was in three hours after the th- when I was supposed to leave. So I was mm-hmm. fine. You know, I can wait in the airport for three hours. I had some friendly's ice cream. Uh, it was okay. Nice. It was just you forbidden all right. chocolate. That's Dude, did you get one. the? Did you get the? Did you get the green goblin? Or or did you green get goblin. the fucking? Clown I, I didn't head? know what to get. I just got some chocolate ice cream. I don't know. All was, right, all right. Uh, basic uh, friendly's experience. <laughs> nah. That's uh, not very friendly. That's, that's not very friendly, that's not very friendly of me. Um, Love you. Yeah. Dude, so but I was like, waiting in the. Th- I, I I got to my gate. Um, on the TV, there's a TV there, and it's showing, like, the number of people who haven't, like, properly checked in, and because they rebooked my flight, I had, like, a special boarding pass, mm-hmm. but it wasn't, like, a, like, I, I wasn't technically on the flight, like, it said a seat, like, request on the, on the, on the p- piece of paper, mm. so I went up to the lady and said, what does this mean, and she says, oh, you're not on the flight yet, uh, once everyone's boarded, then we'll see if there's space, oh. I'm like, oh, you know, this is gonna be... Like a uh, like a really stressful wait, um, and then I'm gonna be told fuck you, and I'm gonna have to call Munchie and yeah. like mess up his plans, uh, his and Kazzy's plans for like flying the next day or whatever. Or I gu- I guess I could have stayed with Ben, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, probably. I was there. I was there, uh, like just watching the 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 long line of people enter the plane. Um, there was like three people left. On my name was still on this TV as like on standby mm-hmm. and the number of names that hadn't been checked in there were like passenger names they were being like checked off as the people walked in and they had the number of seats Bro, you should have been like do plane. you know who i am i'm gib and take mlp <laughs> famous give me a seat <laughs> god damn it lauren faust loves me i have a video with like a hundred thousand views yeah thanks. not bad about um, fapping to horses uh, i don't know if it was that one anyway okay <laughs> my uh, bad they had the number of seats on the plane. They had 168, and it was filling up, and it got to 166. Oh, shit. And I was like, what do I do? Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just sort of, like, pathetically standing there, like, being sad and a cold sweat. Yeah. And the lady, she was not impressed by the fact that I had, like, a seat request. I, I think she was just like, fuck this guy, miss check-in or whatever. Um, but finally she says, you can go in. I go mm-hmm. in. And I have seat 6A, which is a very, like, low number. Um, Seems good. I I walk into the plane, and I'm in, like, the beginning of the plane. I'm in the part where it's, like, the first class business class seats. Where you have lots of leg room with a fancy chair and a TV. And uh, I sit down at 6A, and I'm like, (laughs) whoa. I'm like, whoa. And, uh... I'm in I'm in business class. It was really strange, something I'd never experienced before. I got to see all the things. I I, I was frantically doing like like a, an awful like Casey Neistat like uh, yeah, review yeah, of I everything. This. I was li- <laughs> I, I I I barely filmed anything. I was just too excited. Um, so uh, was the experience? I, does anyone know how much more business class is? Like my big question is: Is it worth it? Like, should I just buy them from now on? Well, all right for for me. Yeah. I mean, it was just comfortable. It's just like everything good. that sucks about being on a plane, i.e. you can't go to sleep and you can't lie down, mm-hmm. uh, that's solved. So instantly it's great. Um, also, the service is a lot better. Yeah. They, they, you know, they don't like uh, look at you funny if you don't know what to say uh, <laughs> like they do in the regular plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're very calm and nice and they give you uh, complimentary orange juice for takeoff. Ooh. I'm like, what What if this spills? What, what am I supposed to do? Off? I gotta dr- gotta chug it. 
Yeah, they, like champagne or orange juice, like uh, orange juice, Ooh, I guess. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to get drunk. What's that thing? Orange juice and champagne in the morning. M- Mimo- mimosa. Mimosa. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So I had like a steak dinner. Uh, before that, I had like a soup. What? Yeah, I saw that. I'm that. retarded now. Why did you make me what? stupid? What is what? what? I do not know. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, I, I there's like a button on on the uh. On the chair thing, there's like a, a, a like a uh, Egyptian hieroglyph with buttons on it, and, and with and arrows. It was like the stripper button. I didn't know what I did. And I pressed, and I was just covered in covered beautiful in naked the, women. It was really the blowjob. Oh, I didn't even really well, see that. Were you, that were you, oh, were you on the Jeffrey Epstein? Fl- were you on the Jeffrey Epstein flight, dude? Oh, I hope so. Uh, yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That that flight has a Dude, sharp were, were down return. Were you an Indonesian at the end flight of 337 and you get lost in the <laughs> middle of the Pacific Ocean? Just like Jeffrey Epstein is yeah. right now. It was a body double. He's a billionaire. You can afford that. Anyway, I like I I I, I had a fun like meal. I watched Nancy Drew again because I just felt like it. <laughs> yeah, you watched it again because <laughs> I like that movie. Uh, and then I started to watch another one like about this teen singer. But then I was like, you know what? I'm tired. Let's get my face mask and my earplugs Whoa. from this complimentary toiletries uh, suit, you know, little little case. Damn. I I pressed the button to go into sleep mode on my um on my uh, chair, and it turned into a bed, and I had a duvet and a pillow, and I just went asleep. And before I knew it, uh, I was there. I, I, the, the whole flight was gone, because I didn't wake up. I was actually soundly asleep. It was unbelievable. I'd never experienced something like that. One day I got, and, I got uh, a the moral hey, of the story. Louis, it's me, your father. It's me, your father. How was your trip? Oh, well, you know, I just was talking to, you know, co- creator of My Little Pony, uh, Lauren Faust, about some projects that I'm working on, you know, seeing if she wanted to get involved in a way. And then I flew back in my business class uh, seat, you know, in my airplane. Uh, and also I drank caviar and I kicked orphans. Also, I'm fucking stupid. Wah, wah, wah. I'm pissing my pants right change now. Change me, change me, dad. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, yeah, like, no, he no, said he's <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, the moral of the story is, uh, l- miss your Be flight, <laughs> miss, miss your flight, and, uh, good miss karma. Miss your flight, com- change your life. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, like, I think, because I was so positive, that was good karma, that was, like, I believe in karma now, only when it suits me. Oh my me. god, you know had the uh, worst karma at the entire fucking time? Uh, can we talk about how Ben was just so unbelievably mean to that one waiter when we were getting the flatbread? Uh, no, and you're they, wrong. Oh no, you're they all accidentally wrong. charged me full price. He would have lowered it, Ben, you just have to remain calm and ask politely. Okay, that, look, I talked to the, that, yeah. wait, maybe it wasn't the same waiter, that place, like, overcharged, like, everyone. I was not the only person that they, look, I think they I honestly think they were doing it on purpose and just like not applying the Maybe. discount, okay? And I didn't yell at the guy. I just said like, "Hey, my order's wrong. You charged me okay. wrong." Fix look, it. look, that may be true, but it's also a fact. What do you every... mean that may be true? That's the whole crux of the argument. No, no, the only it thing is that because Ben, how do you explain how everyone around the table turned you and said like, "Whoa, Ben, relax." I don't know cuz you're all fucking weird. Oh, is that right? what it is? We're fucking, the weird yeah, ones. You're all... <laughs> Yeah, you're all fucking weird it, it, losers that think that it's that think that that think that it's strange that think that it's that think that it's strange to complain to the no, waiter no, when no, they ben, charge ben, you the you're wrong amount for your the meal. Facts. It's not the facts the are it's you could in a polite, reasonable, calm way say the exact same thing and get the problem solved without being mad at the waiter who probably it didn't do anything wrong. It was just funny because there was no build up to the rage. It was immediate. There was, it was yeah. you guys are okay. It's kind of funny. It's a meme, but you guys are overstating it. There was not rage. I just like said it. I didn't yell. I just said <laughs> it was like, very funny. Hey, though. you got my order wrong. Fix it. You did kind of like slam the paper down at the end and like cross your arms at the guy and look at him pointedly. <laughs> yeah, at the I end. guess. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I wasn't like yelling at him. You weren't yelling, but there was there was there was vim and vigor in the vocal tone. Yeah, the, I was the, really. Yeah, the, the I was annoyed. Stern. Yeah, I was okay. annoyed that they didn't charge you, me. Right? You did and, and I'm talk, and sure. talking. You did kind of flip, <laughs> talking to the other. You kind of flipped the table over and punched a dishwasher <laughs> on the way out. Yeah, I guess, but. They char- They literally charged me double what my order was supposed to cost. I talked to other slime guys, yeah. and they told me, like, yeah, the same thing happened to me. I thought it was an odd choice to whisper to the, the general we, manager as we walked the, out, I don't want to see him again when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was real, I mean, you know, fair enough, fair enough. 
Ben, we just need to address your also, uh, bizarre also, I w- burning hatred for waitstaff <laughs> in general. Also, like that class also, of people. Look, waitstaff, you just hate them I was all ex- I was extra annoyed because uh-huh. the meal that I had ordered was shit. It was a terrible well, order. Well, uh, okay. I mean, shit. And I was pissed about that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Dude, o- o- over on the yeah. me and Jesse side of the table, yeah. things were great. We were, we were eating disgusting oh, we were, we were slop eating, and like we hair, eating, like, like whiskers from bugs. walruses. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we had the barbecue. We had we the had classic barbecue. Now, not only us, like bread, us and like uh, all, like all the border. slime guys. Frankly, the PCP boys were weak. Yeah. They, they were not united <laughs> in getting the flatbread. But like all the slime I guys like got it. the no, flatbread. No, I, I, I am like... Thinking about it now, I am salivating thinking of the mozzarella flatbread that I got. That was good, too. Was that was really good, too. Good. The margarita oh, wait, pizza wait, or whatever. No, okay. That, Actually, we we can't end this, because we need to talk about the saga of trying oh, yeah, to get to okay, Because sure. this was another, like, prevalent saga. And I, I need to say this, because it was Correct. me who was trying Correct. to organize it. So, we all walk into BurningCon knowing <laughs> one thing. Listen, Digibro, the greatest YouTuber <laughs> right. ever loves gloves the kona grill barbecue chicken flatbread he talks about it day in day out he had an entire video dedicated to him discussing the ups and downs about this beautiful piece of food that made him would that brought him we to were there tears. when he discovered his love at for one it. point at, i was at, but yeah, yeah 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 so it's a magical like mm, almost mm. holy like no, like almost like ambrosia yes. like a modern day representation <laughs> of ambrosia given pizza form at Kona Grill and we knew we had to go there but like uh, just the factor of this Kona, Gil- Kona Grills are closing like the pay- the company is bankrupt and they're like mass closing just stores. like Brody so it's Con. a miracle that this one was still opening it all comes yeah. full circle yeah mm-hmm. dude okay mm-hmm. alright so so we all immediately like, we got you the barbecue chicken flatbread like we can't go here and not get it so like the first Day. We are in a giant, giant group full of RCK people, you know, PCP people, you know, all the fans and friends. Everyone no wants doubt. to get barbecue chicken flatbread. And so I'm like, okay, we obviously just like can't like walk in because, you know, it's right next to the con, like literally like two feet away, like right next door. Everyone's going there all the time. We got to make a reservation. And so I call up this person. I and I say to the person, hey, listen. We've got a big mm-hmm. party here, 30 people. Can I make a reservation? They say, yes, no problem. For, for on the third, you can come back. We're going to, we'll, we'll get you 30 people. No problem. What's your email? I give them Munchie Wears <laughs> Tiny Hats. Uh, and, and, and then they say like, hey, by the way, uh, if you want to like, if, if you want to have the full menu, since there's going to be 30 people, it's going to be extra because, you know, we're going to have to make a whole bunch of stuff. Can you just like tell me like what you're going to order so we know we have mm-hmm. enough for all of you? And, and, and then I'm like, yes. All 30 of us will be ordering the barbecue chicken <laughs> flatbread. And she says, Fuck oh, yeah. okay, we'll get more. We'll get extra barbecue chicken for you. So I'm like, okay, cool. That went mm-hmm. great, actually. You know, like, I'm coming back. Okay, we got a reservation. That's that's great. You know, cool. 30 people are barbecue chicken flatbread. It's all in the bag. Smash cut to the third. I'm like, okay, let, let me just check in. You know, let me, let me just see, you know, what's going on. Like, you know, let me just say, like, hey, we're coming over. Make sure, you know, they didn't forget about us. We call. The manager is put on the phone. Can't speak English, like, has, like, a very, very, very thick accent, man. which I can't even, like, <laughs> understand what they're saying, really. And so I'm like, hey, reservation for 30 tonight. And they're like, no, 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 no. You made a reservation request. You made a request Ugh. for a reservation. You didn't actually make the reservation. And so uh, we're going to need to get uh, $15 from every single person involved uh, in order to make a reservation. Uh, otherwise, uh, we can't help you. We can't even get you a table. Like, like I was like, can we just get like a smaller group? And like, no, no, no. Like, you, like, you just have to like completely That's like, end $450 this dollars for the layman, and by the way, doing the quick maths. Yeah. Insanity. Yeah. Um, literal insanity. And so I like I'm just dejected because that was the whole point. Like we were talking about like all the time, like barbecue chicken flatbread, that's the thing we're gonna do. We're gonna get this, we're gonna make this happen, bro. And then I made the reservation, everything was fine, and I just wanted to check in just to say hi. And they said, No, everything's ruined, and we're gonna gouge you for fucking money. We're gonna fucking extort you for this barbecue chicken flatbread. You you wanna cry, you wanna you wanna follow in your father uh did you bro's footsteps, you wanna eat barbecue chicken flatbread? <laughs> Give us money, suck our fucking <laughs> cock right goddamn now. And I wouldn't do it because I'm just just not gay enough and so and so what ends up happening is that like i scurry around all the pcp people just like you know the core group and like okay don't tell me we like gotta get a reservation so i make a reservation for just us for just the people we all walk in and 
apparently it's like a sweatshop. There's like, we walk in and like half of the restaurant is empty. Tea. We could have easily fit mm-hmm. 30 people in there. And we ask, hey, why is this entire section of the restaurant, like this entire fucking room not being used? And they're like, we like we have been working like all day. There have been no shift changes. We there's like six people on the entire staff. We are like being worked to the bone. Like it like help us. <laughs> yeah. We're dying. We're being we're, we're like the Indiana Jones 2 <laughs> children being whipped by our Kona Grill overlords. And, uh, and and then they purposely and spitefully try and charge Ben thirty five dollars <laughs> for his two year old that he, that he yeah, humbly and requested. And I brought my righteous fury yeah, down upon so him. So true. So true. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this, you know, you know what you did, Ben. You became he'll he'll, ne- he'll never Indiana work. Jones and Indiana I became Jones who. Too. You, 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 when Anne Jones like gets corrupted, like mind break Dogen into hating all children he'll, and loving ne- slavery, you he'll never work in this town again. It was really again. just a yeah. beautiful Ben moment because he just like the, like the waiter was just like asking around the table like how was everybody's meal and it was like great, good, lovely, fantastic, bad. I didn't like it. You charged me too much. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like it, even though I really didn't. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Um, That's true. But, but anyway, it, it, it was all fine. All the slime house people got to come in. They got to like shuffle yeah. in like one by one. They all had like like be split up. It wasn't like a unifying thing like we all wanted to. But you know what's fine? Most of the people who really wanted to do yeah. it were able to come. And Kona Grill, the barbecue chicken flatbread, my rating, 8.5 out of 10. It was really good. It, it, I'll give it, it an 8. You know, I'll give it, it an 8. It, it didn't make me cry, but it lived up to the hype. It was good. It lived up Very to the good. hype. It was really good. It was acceptable. <laughs> I, I had a bite. I'd give it a 7. It's pretty good. Yeah. But it's, it's a little, a little too though, strong. Right? Yeah. It was a restaurant with food in it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my that's my appraisal. But, d- d- J- Jesse, yeah. I can't get over your food. Like I, the entire time, I was I was like talking about it too. Like I was like continuously look, looking yeah. over. And, like I was like gasped. Well, I got, like, like, eyes bulging. Well, every, like awooga, awooga. Well, everybody was getting on the like the meme train of the barbecue yeah. chicken flatbread. But I'm an adult, so I was like, "Fuck that! Mm-hmm. I want a, I want a, like a sushi thing, like a fucking." Yeah. So I got some kind of like sushi crab lobster, fucking every undersea creature at once, <laughs> like rolled into like this alien pot, like from the movie Aliens. Yeah. And yep, yep. it was awesome. Put them in your mouth, and they fucking like explode was, in your mouth, and all the little nightmare. meats and the little critters come out, and all the little <laughs> all, the, all the little sea hear. spiders run down your chin and start Dude, scuttling about like- the table. When fucking Munchie said he's never had sushi, I was like, what? Nani the that fuck? Is, that is honestly shocking. That's crazy, dog. And you're from California. Cuck Sushi Central, <laughs> as I understand it. Mm, but, well, that is, of course, true. I mean, I mean, I mean, in what thing? I'm not going to go to a Japanese restaurant. What about for, ramen, well, you, you get know? both. Just try it once. It's good. I'm telling you, it's good shit. I, I, do, I then, don't doubt my it. My name then. is Ben, uh, then please ooh, refer to me as such. That's what you get for ever. Thank you. For questioning me ever. Okay, People confused us. People, vlog, maybe, people confused us all the time. People like refer to me as I got called Ben name, multiple times, ben. yeah. Yeah, same. I don't know what the fuck okay, problem Okay, uh, one time. Is. Okay, I'm dressed. I, I think I'm, uh, I, I don't remember. I think I was like Slime Corp Nate or whatever. So whatever, it's me. I'm wearing communist glasses, part of the N8 suit or whatever. So like, okay, pretty recognizable. I'm standing next to Michelle, dressed as Phantom Horn. Oh, no, no, I was Keg. I was Keg, so whatever. I have my Keg glass on and my normal purple glasses. Uh, Michelle's next to me as uh, Phantom Horn. Someone walks by, points to Michelle as as Phantom Horn, says, Hey, it's Ben Saint, and then keeps going and doesn't even <laughs> yeah. acknowledge my presence. First of all, I'm Keg Standard. You like if you recognize Phantom, if you know Phantom Horn, you should, you should know probably... Ke- and I'm like, me. Okay, okay, and this is I Michelle, could, not actually Ben. I could, what went I could wrong? understand I could understand someone knowing who Phantom Horn is yeah. and not knowing Keg Standard. Sure. But if you know that Phantom Horn is it, Ben exactly, Saint, then you must exactly. know. The implications yeah. are mind-boggling uh, here. <laughs> Although, okay, do we, do the possibility wait, 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 exists. Wait, do, do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember that that girl who like mm-hmm. was talking to Michelle? Like she came up to Michelle yeah. and asked her about her Phantom Horn cosplay. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And was talking about like, oh yeah, he was in. She's like she knew that he was like in the first episode of uh, Analysis. Yes, right, right. And stuff, and she's asking like, oh yeah, who was that guy? Yeah, I don't who I don't know anything. About. And and I'm standing right there, yeah. just kind of like looking between the two, and like, oh, sh- should I say something? <laughs> and finally, I did. Finally, I was like, oh yeah. By the, that was me, by the way. Yeah, I was Phantom Horn, and she was just like, "Oh, okay," and just walked away. <laughs> Didn't give a single <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, incredible. 
a point of totally think... inconsequential curiosity <laughs> for her. Indeed. I think I may have been, like, uh, as give and take, recognized by more people, which is funny. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Probably. so. It, it feels yeah. like TBAP was more popular. I, well, TBAP, I don't know. Uh, I, don't I felt know. like I felt like Phantom Horn was a pretty iconic, well-known design. I don't yeah, think Keg was Phantom very. Horn, you know. I think Phantom Horn reached a bit. Yeah, beyond beyond he, he, a, a little, a little, he, he had a little bit of reach beyond just people that watch TBAP. Like uh, some people heard about yeah, him. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's great design. It's great design. Well, I mean, all, he was also in in I, Analysis Anarchy. Oh yeah, that's true. I think even I think even beyond that, people knew about. Oh yeah, that that one OC with the toilet paper roll. Which, for it, the record, it, Keg Standard yeah. Me was offered the role of Demo Man. I turned them down because I read the script. That is what happened. People forget <laughs> yeah. this, but it's true. I deserve all the praise. Thank you very much. People don't forget. Just, just nobody. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. Yeah. You might be right. Uh, oh, hey, okay. So moving on from BronyCon, I have one outside story of something that happened to me yesterday that I would love to tell everybody. It's a bit of a saga, but I think when it's done, you will agree. Uh, this is this might even rival BronyCon in its sheer ferocity of energy. Okay, so 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 Jesse, have you been to Kings Island before? You've probably been there, right? Uh, no. Where is it? No. Okay, it's it's an Ohio. Um, uh, Ohio a theme months. park that's okay. like N- Nate. Wait, yeah. I just want to say real quick. This is so bizarrely yeah. serendipitous because I also went to a Sierra Fair owned amusement park. Okay, just so two all right, so I was there ago. yesterday, but yeah, timeline matched continue. pretty close. Yeah. So, so the thing was, um, we had gone. Me and Michelle just like at the beginning of summer, we're like, hey, we haven't been to like a water park thing. Let's go to Kings Island, which is like a water park slash amusement park, and like we paid like exorbitant prices for the tickets. They try to get you to do like student <laughs> discounts or mil- like they really try to do discounts. I'm like, I don't know any of this. I'm just paying the full price, and they were like shocked that someone is like actually <laughs> paying full price. But whatever, I did it. But the thing was. If you buy the crazy the ticket, they're, they're like seventy five dollars per person for one day. I know it's it's insane, but here's the thing: when you do that, you actually get a second day just free. You can just Whoa. come back, and it's so basically that like halves the price. Now, now you're not actually like making your money back. You're gonna spend more at the park, but like it feels good, and so I did it. Um, so me and Michelle went yesterday, August tenth, two thousand nineteen. So. The, the park is great. Me and Michelle spent most of our... So l- last time we were there, Michelle and I, like the first thing we did was go on like a wooden coaster that we were told was not that big a deal. Oh, right. I've told this before, but was actually horrific for her and deeply traumatizing <laughs> because she is not good at these things. So she was traumatized. So we spent most of the time yesterday doing like baby coasters and baby rides. They were a lot of fun. Had a good time. Okay. But, but as the day went on, the looming mountain that is Diamondback. Diamondback is the fastest roller coaster, I think, in, like, the, like, the Midwest. It's, like, it's, like, a million feet tall. It goes, like, 80 hour, 80 miles per hour or something, and, like, it loomed over me as a challenge to my masculinity, as, like, I, when I was young, I did, like, the Superman ride at Six Flags New England. I did all those crazy rides, but I'm, like, I'm, like, spooked. I'm, like, this is the final boss of King's Island, and, Ugh, I don't know. I'm going to do other stuff. So as the day goes on, I start to do the more serious rides. And then as we get close to the end of the day, uh, I'm thinking like, oh, maybe I'll do like the Banshee. It's like the second fastest one. I'll do this thing called the Monster. These are other kind of more serious rides. But like, no, I've got like an hour and a half until the park closes. It's like 830. And I'm like, Michelle, now's the time. I'm going to be a real man. I have to get in line for Diamondback. And Oblivion, please edit in some footage of what it looks like to ride Diamondback. And just the sheer scale of this thing. It's fucking insane. And I was legitimately terrified. But I get in line at like uh, something like 845, an hour and 15 minutes or so before the park closes. And and the saga begins. So, so time is ticking, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. I told Michelle it'd probably be like 45 minutes, but 45 minutes passes, I'm like not even halfway there. And it's getting closer and closer to the closure. People are in line way behind me, and I'm like, there's no chance they're getting in. Why are they even waiting in line? I don't even know if I'm gonna make it, but hey, whatever. I'm just I'm just praying that I get there so I can actually overcome this obstacle that's been there. Because, like, the first time I went, I was too scared to even try. This is my second time. I don't even know if I'll live in Ohio, like, this time next year, like, summer next year, if I'll ever get another chance. This is my last opportunity to do so. So, the pressure is building. I give Michelle my phone and my wallet, and I get whatever. I get in line. I'm waiting. Okay, so here we go. So, I'm starting to get nervous as we're getting closer and closer up to the line. And, and... You know, the, the duration of the wait starts to introduce fears into the mind, you know? Little little demons, little demons start to creep in. And I'm like, 
I'm just watching other people go line after line of people doing this insane, like, vertical drop. You guys, I'm, I gotta get a fucking picture of this thing. It is so fucking, uh, okay, I'm good. watching it right now. Yeah, link it's that to insane. the other guys so they can see too. It's fucking insane, this fucking ride. And so I'm thinking to myself, do I really want to do this? What if I just get on there? And I'm just panicking and crying and pissing myself and shitting. And I'm legitimately too scared. So my my heart is wavering in a big way. Okay. All of a sudden, like the virgin fucking Mary, a kindly mother, a like two people up in the line, starts chatting with other people. And I just hear her over say that like, like this is like a 50-year-old mother with her child. And they've both done this before. And they're like, oh yeah, she's like, oh, you know, it's a little scary on the ride up. But like after that, it's like such a smooth ride, like because it's metal. And sure, it's fast, but you can really, you can endure it. It's no big deal. And like hearing those words, this encouragement from this, from literally, I mean, that's her and her son, presumably Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> it just, it fills me. It fills me with confidence. I'm like, this mom did this no problem. I am a boy. I am a man. I can do this. And so I feel, I am at peace. I feel reassured and serene. I, I'm committed. So you know, the line go on for a long time. We're getting close. We get to like the stairs, the final approach. It is 557. So sorry, 957. We've got three minutes until the things close. Everyone's starting to get spooked that we're not going to have enough time. And I'm getting spooked too. And meanwhile, so of course, uh, Ben, I'm sure you'll appreciate this. The fucking mm -hmm. like gold speed pass people are just waltzing right by all of us waiting in line. Ugh. Those capitalists. Did you did you know that one percent of the yeah. theme park visitors ride ninety nine percent of the rides? Oh, it's 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 unconscionable. It's fucked up. And okay, so me and Michelle, because we knew that this was an issue, we just we went and asked, like, hey guys, we're just curious, like we might get speed passes. This is early in the day. Should we get them? How much should they be? And they were like, they're between $75 and $90 a pop for one no. day, the fucking speed pass. No. Can you, I was, uh, my mind exploded into a thousand pieces <laughs> when I heard that. It was fucking insanity. So obviously we didn't fucking do it. But so, so I'm, I'm in line. These fucking speed pass fat cats are just waltzing right by. And I'm like, you know what? Capitalism, it had a good run. It's time to end. We need equal opportunity for equal people. This is fucked up to the core. That they're just waltzing yeah. by. But as we're getting- Yeah, did you, did you seize the means? We, 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 you know, I tried. I, I, I initiated my plan to start writing my manifesto <sighs> right then and there. Uh, to be published probably Another tomorrow. Another revolution. Okay, but, but as we were getting there, now I notice- so we're like on the stairs, or just me, Michelle was waiting for me the whole time. As I'm climbing the stairs, I see that actually, I'm getting to a point where the speed pass people are actually only being allowed like four or five at a time. And actually the main line is actually going faster, even though there's a lot less speed people. Like sure, the speed people get on uh, like faster overall, but they still have to wait until their line clears before they're allowed to go. And the general admission people like me, we're getting on, like, there's like, you know, like 20 of us getting on per ride, and it's it's making pretty good time. So, like I said, it was 9, 9.57, the clock is ticking, we're going, but we're actually getting a pretty close, uh, you know, we're getting pretty close to being in line. It's like 9.58, 9.59, and then finally, that 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 humble child, that, that school, uh, fuck, school child on summer break, getting his summer job, he looks at me with the patience of, of Buddha himself and gives me the slow nod and ushers me into the golden realm of this <laughs> ride. So I'm stepping like a fucking pimp onto my row 10, I believe it was, a fucking diamond back. I'm next to, I'm next to some guy I don't know. We sit down, we're chatter, we're bantering. And as we're getting, it is pitch black, it is 10 p.m. You know, there were a couple that went after us, but this is among the very last rides that go on diamond back. But that's not all. Because at 10 p.m. every night at Kings Island, a fireworks show begins. Oh, my and God. And right as we are sitting in the seats about to go, the f it is fucking stroke at 10. The fireworks begin to go off in the distance. Oh, And we're, God. we're just, we're in awe. We're like, this is, this is, inc I cannot believe You're the timing on this. You're talking about the fucking gold saucer fucking I, it, That's exactly night. it. I, I had Tifa next to me. She was sucking yeah! my dick. I was squeezing those titties. It was yeah! an incredible experience. 
And so we're, we're, as we're climbing up this this terrifying mountain that I'm experiencing utter panic at the, at, at the prospect of going down, but I have the Virgin Mary's words in my mind, keeping me calm and at peace as literally the fireworks are going off directly above our heads, like a little bit to the left past the fucking Eiffel Tower that's at King's Island. We're filled with the spirit of America. And as we go over the peak towards the plummeting distance down below, I'm filled with the courage. And so I sing out, I, I know that it was due to only because capitalism, I didn't get a gold pass. It was the system works perfectly. It, it, it's it, it operating as intended. I'm experiencing the fireworks. I'm experiencing a love of my people and my country. We were the most diverse group of people on the planet. We were all brothers in this enterprise. We go over the peak and I literally in real life Break out looking at the fucking fireworks and the rocket red glare! The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. The crowd, everyone on the right is cheering with me. They join in the song. This happens in real life. No. We're all singing the national fucking no. anthem. Hell we go yeah. crashing no down. No fucking way. It, 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 look, we go over the first hill. We're singing our fucking hearts out. We're, we're saluting the flag. Over the second hill. Okay, the thing about it's 10 p.m. There's no lights. We are in pure darkness. We're going down over the second hill but but we feel the spirit of George Washington filling our hearts as we're going down. It's darkness, but the fireworks are the bombs bursting in air are illuminating our illuminating the ground below, and we feel safe. And it fills us with the courage to handle it. And we're riding it out. We're going down, and we keep singing the song. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave <laughs> eighty miles an hour. Tears streaming from my eyes from the from the wind or the land of the free <laughs> and the home of the brave. We come to a stop. We ease into the final, the final resting place. And I just shout to myself, this one's for you, George Washington. And they burst into applause. The guy next to me, uh, Dennis or, or Derek, whoever he was, he's my new best friend. He turns to me and he says, that was the most patriotic thing I've experienced as long as I can remember. A child in front of me turns around and says to me, quote, nice singing. It was the most, it was the most heroic <laughs> experience I've ever had. We're, we're, we're cruising in, I'm getting off, I see Michelle waving to me, having experienced, she, she was thinking to herself, oh, I wonder if Nate's on that last one, I hope he makes it. I was, I was in heaven with George Washington, with America. <laughs> we, we saluted the flag, we joined in brotherhood. I've never felt more at one with my people of America as I did that day. Thank you, capitalism. Thank you, George Washington. And thank you, America. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> And scene. Woo! And that's that's the story yes, of me. Yes. I made it. I made it onto Diamondback, and I I love America more than I ever have before. Take that, Karl Marx. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a real story. I, uh, that's a real story. That that you was that was beautiful. It. I did I'm it. crying mm -hmm. right now. I thought I, I literally that, saw that was that a journey. Was peak Nate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking shredded well, my fun. throat. On that ride and now. And uh, maybe it's time for those voicemails. What do you say? <laughs> let's yeah. go on a high yeah. note. Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. Okay. yeah let's okay, let's do it. I got the one um, right here. Da, 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 da. Oh, by the way, about the Diamondback thing, I uh, uh, the thing was I kind of feel a little bit guilty. Like I didn't fully experience all the terror. I, I think I almost had like an unfair buff of patriotism and courage, because I don't remember the ride that well. I kind of blacked dude, out with love dude, of my everyone, country. Everyone knows, everyone knows courage is cheating. I kind of agree, I kind of agree. Um, okay, okay, that said, let, let's go to the fucking voicemails here. Let me hit uh, play. This one is from saying goodbye to a goat. Okay, go, 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 go. So Quentin Tarantino's new movie came out. Mm. It's pretty dope. Uh, in the past, Tarantino has famously said that he would retire after he directs 10 films. And since he considers mm. 
Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2 to be one film. That makes this his ninth movie, meaning he has one more and will then retire. As artists, how do you feel about this approach to art, setting a limit for yourself so that your career doesn't dwindle on and you lose your creative spark or ability later in life? Hmm. You think it's a good idea? Think it's bullshit? Um, well, I, I think it's bullshit. I mean, I think it's bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's a weird number. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you have like a good idea that you want to make later, why would you be like, yeah, oh, but I made I mean, ten like, already. I can't do it. It's one thing if it's he, like, he's not gonna stick to it. Come on, yeah, yeah. I, I don't if, think if, that's if it were like, yeah. oh, I've made ten movies and now I'm burnt out and I feel shitty and I don't want to make stuff. That yeah, would be different. fun. I'd understand that. But to say from the beginning, you know, I only I only got ten ideas and then after that, ah, fuck it, fuck it, who cares a shit? It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You know, on its face, it sounds like a preposterous idea, but let's let's give the idea its due, because I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, Jesse, I'm sure you remember, there's a famous Star Trek, the Next Generation episode, where, and I think I've talked about it a bunch of times, where, like, there's this, there's this dude who's, like, in charge of some important science thing or whatever, and, like, he meets Diana Troy's slut mother, who's, who's <laughs> dope, and, um, they, uh, they, uh, like, he hits his 60th birthday or something, and, like, his people come around and they're like, well, this is what we do on your 60th oh, birthday. Yeah, we literally yeah. celebrate your achievements and then you commit suicide because like, this is the time limit we give our people to like achieve things in their life before they, we kill them. Yeah. Like they kill themselves. That's also what they do in the, oh, is this, don't is this be a burden. double that other the, movie? The, the new what, spooky like, movie Midsummer is also that. Oh, oh, is it about that too? Huh. Yeah, dude. Oh, did you oh, see Midsummer? Did. Fucking, did you oh, see should I see it? Should I see that? Dude, that I want to. It was so fucking sick. hilly. It was, it was fucking so dope. Good. It was fucking scary. Oh, Spooky go bullshit, that. baby. Dude, yeah. Dude, dude I, I love that it's a, dude, it's a Jesse, horror movie. Dude, every that's single like day, flowers I, I wake and sunshine up. the whole time. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Dude, okay, my alarm is the scene from when oh the tent God. was burning down. I gotta see it, that's this. That's my alarm yeah, every single that, day. That, so that I have to wake up in the morning or else I'll be stuffed into a bear. <laughs> you wake up every morning like, oh my God, I'm ah! a burning bear. I'm a burning bear. Let me out. <laughs> um, oh, well, okay, okay. So so to, obviously I'm not actually in favor of that idea. But like the idea is, I mean, I'm sure Quentin thinks that in a couple of ways. That, like, he doesn't want his legacy to be tarnished, probably, by like the shittier things he might he make when he gets Simpsons. older and loses vim and vigor and shit. But, like, you just gotta... I mean, de definitely, yeah. like, uh, some people only have so many, like, creative sparks in them before they're mm -hmm. dead. Um, like, like a, a, an artist that makes albums past their peak just because money... Look at fucking David obviously Bowie, Obviously, is, like, it's, un it's not ideal. Well, David Bowie was just very, Look, very we good. We all know David Bowie's kind of an exception to, you know, many of these I, rules. I guess it... Uh, but I guess it... That, like, David Bowie is the ideal. Basically. I guess it makes sense when you look at, like... Mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino himself specifically as like a guy who less, who just like makes the movies he watched growing up because you mm -hmm. can kind of see like okay well he made his crime movie and he made his David Carradine kung fu movie and he made his yeah, horror movie yeah. and he made his western so I could see how like he just wanted to make his version of the movies he liked and now that he, he's mm -hmm. run out of those genres that makes sense I guess yeah I mean, I've changed my own mind I think it's cool <laughs> you know I, basically if somebody wanted to do that I, I, I can't really find a way to, like, object to it. I wouldn't do it because it seems silly. Like, I, I would take more of the approach of... It just seems of, limiting. It just seems yeah. like, why would you... Like, it, I think, I mean, at the beginning, like, mm -hmm. it's just, like, if you yeah, have nothing else the to say, then you say it just for the sake of it. But, like, I, I, it seems weird to me to just, like, say that, like, oh, I will well, have nothing is, to yeah. say. He is also point, talking so about, stop like, doing a Star Trek movie and how that wouldn't count towards the ten. So, uh, <laughs> so like, okay. I, I can see how, like, maybe yeah, he'll still think... direct or still write, but not, like, both on one movie or something, is his point. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm sure he'd do things, you know, to fucking fill his time and be somewhat creatively fulfilled in other ways. Uh, I don't know. I mean, also, it's just, it's just sort of like a pretty cool marketing idea mm -hmm. to, like... This is my final film, yeah. so you better go yeah. see like, it. He, like, oh, he calls guess, one like you know, go see it. The, the Hateful Eight. It's the eighth movie. He's really he's really sticking to that theme with his uh, like numbered movies and at least a little bit. I, the fucking Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is his, not called like Nine movie Boys is in Hollywood. Be called X. Yeah. Nine, nine Boys nine in Hollywood. Nine Boys in Hollywood. <laughs> is uh, us. <laughs> Damn, that is us. Um. Okay. Well, uh, th there you go, Quentin. Uh, uh do do your thing. 
Let's go on to the next. <laughs> Quentin himself left that voicemail. Yeah. Said, "Was that a good idea?" Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 Quentin. Quentin, you have no more lollipops. Please. Let's listen to uh, our boy Dang Energy. Dang Energy calling in. Okay, go. Hello, PCP. Mm. You might have Hello. heard of Bang Energy, which mm. reverses retardation. But let me tell you, I found this <laughs> oh, new wait, I Uh-oh. See. <laughs> energy drink called dang energy you know what it does it gives you retardation and i've been drinking Indeed. by the gallon <laughs> my, my iq is like the city of new orleans below sea level <laughs> when I've been drinking it, i just cannot shit even says it on the side so be aware you may shit rocks. and man the okay. best thing this energy drink has done to me is make mm-hmm. me appreciate my little pony. I just can't get enough of it, man. Uh, Dang energy. Uh, get retarded. <laughs> um, get retarded the, is the, a good tagline. Is it on, is but, it on but Amazon? Where can yeah, I buy it? I need it, it. I need it now. I, I, I mean, I will just say to this guy that he seems, uh, uh, dare I say, almost a fake yeah. fan. Because this is just literally just fuck energy. Like, this just oh is God. exactly what fuck energy is Maybe he's a competitor? For. It's not at all any, like, oh, yeah, like, you thought of it being, like, it, it makes you retarded. Yeah, wow, okay, yeah, that's really funny, dude. Uh, smash cut to uh, the entirety of New Los Angeles City, a.k.a. New Milwaukee, being, un- being forced upon fuck energy just day in day out for like months preceding this come on bro come on pretty fucking yeah, pretty, really have to lazy. Spell pretty voice jail if you ask me I just me. hope the, the marketing team for dang can afford the rights to the hit retard anthem mm-hmm. let's get retarded and let's ha. get retarded I mean it really writes mm-hmm. itself it really writes itself uh <laughs> I, I I mean I mean does 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 Dang Energy even steal your soul and make <laughs> your soul I be sold it. into slavery by the devil? I don't think it does. Step up yeah, your game, Dang. Uh, okay, let's go on. We've got one from a uh, comfortable Sama. Comfortable Sama. Go. Hey fellers. Yo. Have any of you guys been to a movie Shut alone? Up. If so, please tell me about it. Once the movie was over, when you stood up to leave. Did the women of the crowd laugh and <laughs> help you with their snacks and sodas? <laughs> I'm a neat with no social connections, but I okay. want to see Millennium Actress, and I want to see these Djibouti mm, movies mm. that are coming to theaters. <laughs> but to be honest... What is wrong with this person? To be honest with you, uh, to be honest, I'm go. a little anxious. Wait, what's <laughs> happening here? You should. He, he he's uh, he's anxious about the idea There's... that if he goes to the theater by himself, people will notice yeah, yeah, and laugh and at him. him. Oh, Nobody no, dude, will give I a shit. Uh, yeah, I'm laughing dude, at you I right now. It. I achieved that fucking yeah. mode of like I'm finally <laughs> old enough. I can go to the theater by myself now. Mm-hmm, and I saw mm-hmm. Spider Man: Far From Home by myself in the fancy theater with the big chairs that recline. Yep. and it was dope. That's sick. That fucking That's scene sick. where Mysterio is doing the fucking messing with Peter's mind. Fucking mm-hmm. Kino. Oh, was that good? Was that good? I was thinking about I actually that. didn't like it that much, except for that scene okay. with Mysterio, which was great. I like Jake Gyllenhaal uh, all of these, I, All of these Zoomer Spider-Man movies are just not hitting the right spot for me, to be perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. Uh, all, all these people with anxiety who don't go leave the house need to understand that only you mm. think about you. No one else is like looking at you and being like, oh, what's that guy up to? He doesn't have any friends, huh? That's sure strange. Mm. Uh, everyone's just like, oh, it's a weird it, fat it, guy. It was great, uh, yeah, but it was, it was, it was, right. it was not Where am I my Toby? taxes now? Uh, fair, that's understandable. Mm. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you just don't care. But I will say, no one does care. So, you know, let, let that fuel sure. you with, with yeah. power. Nobody cares. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. No one no one cares about you or what mm. you're doing at the movie theater. This is a silly question. <laughs> Please kill yourself. I, I you know, and I'll, I'll give you it. I'll give you some courage on this. I, I don't do this a lot, but like I, I'll go to the movies and generally I'll take Michelle or whatever. But like I am both happy and willing and honestly eager to go to the movies by myself. I don't even want to go with people. I only do it because, uh, like, I might as well take someone yeah. along for the ride who might want to see it. I would love to go alone and just not talk to anyone. Going to the movies is that. great, and I and do I recommend it. If you can't afford to go to BronyCon, go to the movie mm-hmm. theater. And you yeah, can't go to indeed. BronyCon ever again. So go to the movie theater <laughs> instead. <laughs> indeed. It's better. <laughs> 
Mid- Midsummer was, was so was good, dude. My, I think about that scene when when oh god, uh, Christian is a mm. high off his ass, and then this dude like <laughs> writes in his face, and he's yeah, like, "Why yeah. would you do that?" I think about that every single time. <laughs> did you see the? Uh, that did just you see the previous one by the director? Max upon Hereditary. Me. That one is also great. No, I, I haven't a, seen Hereditary. Yeah, no, I have a thing that I did, a video, but it was a patron thing because I forgot to release it. It was for the scary, spooky <laughs> bullshit thing. And it was uh-huh. like the last one that I forgot to ever make public, so I have to wait till this October to show it. But well, uh, I, I deemed, <laughs> it, I deemed it, it the world's first heli movie. Like you know, mm-hmm. you know, there's scary, spooky bullshit. Some of it's scary, <laughs> and some of it's spooky, and it's all bullshit. And some of it's scary, spooky yeah. bullshit. But the next level, the next category is heli. You don't want to see uh-huh. a heli movie. You don't want to do <laughs> '70s drugs and then strap yourself in for a heli movie. It's too intense. You'll fucking you'll have night terrors in real life, in real time, and it's a great experience. But it's an experience you never want because it is hell. It's cool. It, uh, did- so that was hell. Uh, I don't think that mm-hmm, Midsummer mm-hmm. was quite as helly as Hereditary, mm-hmm. but it was great. It was as good, but not as helly, no. if that makes sense. What's the, what's the general premise of Hereditary? Just the, the um, they're kind of they're kind of like the same movie. They're kind of like companion pieces. Oh, yeah? They're both about a cult doing okay. a, a stupid ritual. They they <laughs> believe in retarded gods and demons, Lol. and uh, they have stupid customs. Um, the first movie is like, uh, like. Anything like the whole plot is a spoiler, so mm-hmm. you can't say anything about okay, it. Really, sure, but it's sure. basically like a movie about someone being sacrificed by a cult from the perspective of the person, like from the perspective of the sacrificial lamb, is how Oof, I saw it okay. described. And it's really scary, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's just like horrible things happening to this family, and there's uh-huh. it's just bleak and horrifying, and Damn, it's, I it's see awesome. It. And I'm gonna watch them both now. And Midsummer is like a companion piece to where like it's also about a cult. But this one is during the daytime, and it's kind Ooh. of it's, it's it's got like a real like a like a seventies Wicker Man atmosphere to it, and uh, it's just the bees, the bees, yeah. Like she goes wow. there, she's got this like horrible fear and anxiety about death because her sister committed mm-hmm. suicide and her parents yeah, were killed yeah. in it too, and she's like all messed Jesus up, Christ. and she goes there. But these like crazy like Swedes just like pump her full of like magic mushrooms and they start like <laughs> they have these like ridiculous rituals and people are jumping off cliffs to like kill themselves because they're too old. And and it oh. just it just gets crazier and crazier until at the end it's like the most completely fucking butt fucking insane shit you've ever seen. And it's cool Sick. and it's disturbing and it's rad. Dude. Yeah. It's so good. The in- the end God, I, I saw this so, review like, that, that really it. earned I love me. that movie. Um, there's this channel that I found when the Game of Thrones finale was happening and everyone was shitting on it. Uh-huh. I found a channel who was also shitting on it. It was pretty cool called the uh, the the Critical Drinker or something. I think that's mm-hmm. it. Uh, he, he's like this like Scottish guy and his thing is that he's drunk and he just complains. And like when he was complaining Sick. about Game of Thrones, it was cool and I was all on board. But like the more you watch of his videos, the more you realize that he's one of those who like sees every movie through the lens of like this is SJW mm-hmm. propaganda. Oh, sure, it's sure. another SJW movie and all of these fuck. It's all feminism. I can't stand it. Uh, and it's just like, shut up, you fucking idiot it's just like like i agree with you but (laughs) shut the fuck up uh it it always makes me sad when i hear people like that who who might not do something like say enjoy the awesome wonderful experience that was watching steven universe it was his midsummer review that was really irking me because he just like he only saw it through the lens of like and of course the main character who's a female is right about everything and her boyfriend her boyfriend has to of course be a stupid (laughs) asshole because he's a man and it's like oh my that's not the point of the movie and he's like like he was like and the part the part at the beginning where the parents die and the sister dies ultimately had no impact on the story or the themes and it's like are you fucking oh, retarded God, did he actually the say that what the fuck is that it gave her like this anxiety about death the movie is about death it's not about feminism you're you're just choosing <laughs> to see it through these fucking insane anti SJW culture warrior goggles and you're missing the whole fucking point of it all That's you one of the fucking reasons. YouTubers stop it I, I watched uh, Red Letter Media's I watch Red Letter Media's review of this, and that's one of the reasons I like them so much. I feel so confident that they are not political, and it's, like, yeah. fantastic. Great. Just tell me what happened. Is it good? Great. That's what I want to know. Um, okay, well, sick. Let's move on to our next fucking voicemail. Uh, this is from LOL Pussies Put Here Eating With Spoons. Uh-oh. I don't okay. like that. Uh, go. <laughs> if you get ice cream in cups and not cups, I don't like this. you're literally put... Pussy, bro. <laughs> I don't like this. 
liked for the burp in the middle. Um, Wait, what? What? Yeah, I, I, okay. What? What? Yeah, I, quite, yeah, I agree. Let's play it again. Let's play that again. Uh, uh, I'll turn up. No. The, oh, you, oh, you heard it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I think he's just saying if you don't use no, a cone, just... you're a pussy. That's true. Hard agree. Hard agree. It's the wrong. It's the wrong way to do it. I, it's the coward's way I, out. I. I I don't want to see that person in here. <laughs> Vo- voice jail? Voice jail? Vo- you, you, you know what? You know what? He, does, he doesn't deserve it. But yeah, voice All jail. Right. Ben, let's just slam it. Done. Let's one just slam it. He doesn't deserve it, but let's do it anyway. One and done, buddy. Lol pussies <laughs> put here eating with spoons. Uh, there you go. Straight to jail. Uh, let me post that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Let, us, let us get this more is, this liberal is with our ban hammer and our jail key. We'll, we'll throw this the whole world th- This is what rope the air felt like he was like oh yeah we'll <laughs> kill the king oh i can just kill anyone now <laughs> they just just went around doing it it's great okay uh we got one from let me see this is um idea man slash woman or creator man slash woman okay uh go <laughs> hey pcp so Sup? with a unique group like yours um mm-hmm. i'm wondering um you guys as creators uh, do you guys have more trouble with coming up with an idea for something or Mm -hmm. do you guys have more trouble actually doing the work of the creating definitely doing the work Um, yeah because definitely some of you not to name any names doing the work nate and seem to be lacking Mm -hmm. in the making things department shut up dude (laughs) (laughs) um I, okay, I mean the answer is I, I have I have a huge backlist of projects. So yes, obviously. Look, my problem right now is it's hard to make weekly videos and still carve out time. But I'm fixing it. God damn it! Give me time. It's been one month. Give me a break. I'm easing into a new job. Yeah. Fuck you. My thing is that like the ideas are come easy and they never end, and it's yeah. Like so, my, my problem you build dude, up a I, massive backlog of stuff, and this becomes yeah. overwhelming to yeah, even my, start on anything. Like I'll, I'll have an mm-hmm. idea, and I'll just be like, well. I better just forget about that because, like, I have other ones uh, and like, yeah, gotta that, do those that first. hurts me so much. Fu- yeah, fuck it. and I don't yeah. have, I don't have like writer's block ever so much as I have mm-hmm. like the block of like, oh my god, what, what's the point? I don't want people paying attention to me. I don't want to fucking <laughs> upload a video. I fucking hate all of this so much. Like, I feel like that ninety nine percent of every day. So that's my thing. Is that, like, tough. I have the ideas. I, the I just don't want to be really seen. Easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, really enjoy, like, working and, like, actually just, like, making something happen. But I, I hate, like, having to come up with ideas for, like, what to do. I, I hate having the initial just, like, oh, God, okay, so what's going to happen, like, here? Like, what's going to happen at this aspect? Uh, I don't know. But, like, the, once I have, like, know what I'm doing, then it's, like, really, well, like, fun well, and that's, cool Well, I mean, me that's, that's the work. That's doing the work. Like, having the idea is one thing. That's... Like, like actually fleshing it out and, like, figuring out the details mm. is, well, is I mean, part e- of the even work. Well, I mean, that. Yeah, even that is, like, is, like, 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 I, like, right now I'm I'm drawing mm-hmm. comics and it's like, yes, I came up with the idea. I know exactly what's going to happen, but like l- the literal like panel layout and the the smaller things, like I don't yeah, have that yeah. in my in my head. I have some panels that are like the big ones, but like getting to from you know all of the stuff, getting to doing all of the smaller p- parts, they're still creative, but th- there is like a lot of work in there. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's just, it's like, ah, I'd rather just be doing the yeah, end. I, I, I'd rather be doing the yeah, cool bit. I, I feel you on that. But like, I'll, I'll, mm-hmm. I say this, this, I, I know I've said this before, but like, uh, honestly, the place I am that is the happiest that unfortunately, tragically, I'm not really in right now. The place I'm happiest is when I'm working on a project that I think it, that I, I at least initially think was good. And I'm, you know, was excited to be working on it. I just love being trapped in basically the prison of working on that project and not having to worry about other things. Like that's like when I'm working on like a big smash video, when I was like, that's why like my six month periods of like making those big videos, the best anime ever or whatever. I love being there. Cause like every day I know exactly what I have to do next. Yeah. I, I know the purpose I have. It's it's honestly freeing to have that kind of restriction on what I can do. Yeah. It makes me not have to and worry when about you get like on, every... When you get on a roll, even the working part can be the fun yeah. part. It's just like the general, yeah, totally. it's just for me, the general anxiety of uploading mm-hmm. a fucking thing. And yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it just like increases every year and it never gets any less. So now it's like everything is mm-hmm. you're second guessing everything like, oh, my God, someone's going to take this out of context and someone's going to weaponize this against me. And someone's going to fucking not get mm-hmm. this joke and someone's going to take this too seriously. And it's like, what's the point? Just make everything That's Patreon insane. exclusive, which I do. Patreon.com slash Endless Jazz. Become a patron and give me money. It's cool. Mm-hmm. 
That's uh, that's fair. It, that's fair. It, I feel it, that just to a degree. It feels too. so good to have like a clear, like very specific goal thing you're working mm-hmm. on. Like right now, I'm working on a a a, 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 a what how Undertale do you say? Like a sequel two. to the AR. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm working on Undertale mm-hmm. two. I'm making a sequel to like the ARG that I talked about previously on the PCP mm-hmm. for more endless war stuff. And it's just great. It's just great coming up with stuff and be like, oh, dude, I can do this, and it'll be really neat and ac- epic. And then I write a bunch of stuff. I'm like, wow, I'm doing it, and it it's great. It's a lot. The of only fun. thing. The thing that I, I like, I said, I game. love being in that space. But the the one thing that haunts me fairly frequently, it, it's not even that. Like I write down every good idea I have. Basically, I write down and I have documents and I have like things relatively organized. So it's unlikely I'll like lose track of them. But specifically in that process, the thing is, there are periods where I get an idea and I'm really excited about it, and I know that if I worked on it right then and there, I could make something really cool. The problem is, even if I write down all my thoughts. If I get back to that project in like six months, it's just that that fire oftentimes will go out. And then it's like, oh, like even if I make this, like, am I even that excited about it? Like, is it, it's the exact same ideas. I've simply lost the passion for it. And that's, that can happen sometimes. Sometimes it's the opposite and though. Like sometimes I'll yeah. write half of a script and stop giving a shit about it. And then I'll mm-hmm. find it again six months later, having forgotten it and be like, Oh, that's cool. And I'll just absentmindedly start adding to it. And then I'll finish it randomly six months later. Like, Hey, this you know, is it's like w- once, cool. once you kind of bring the project back to life, like when you work and like, you're actively working on it and like changing the stuff. Like, oh, I can add this here. And like, you're editing it, which, you know, I do that fairly frequently. Yeah. That is a pretty yeah. gratifying if, if process. If you're like losing that's your, pro- if you're losing the passion, like halfway through a project, you can just take a break and come back to it. And sometimes that, works that's sometimes true. it gets lost forever but who gives a fuck that's very true you know i like i have like everything i've ever written for mm-hmm. like the last eight years like every lyric every song every like video idea every screen like everything like mm-hmm. like fucking like terabytes of like written stuff is all on this one laptop that i've used forever and none of uh-huh. it is backed up anywhere it's not in the cloud it's only on this laptop so i live my mm-hmm. life in a constant state of fear and anxiety that something will happen to my laptop because my now, entire I life like... is on there I feel like you almost kind of want that to happen. I think at I least maybe to I a almost degree. kind of do, and it almost because you can back those up to like Google Drive or something. Potentially, well, like it's really it's hard and weird because it's on like this it's on this old MacBook from 2014, uh-huh. and everything's written on this program called Notes or something, and it's not mm. like any other like document. Like you can't export the files anywhere. They export in this okay. weird okay. file type that like only works on a Mac. Can you not like copy paste? I have to. I have that, to. I have that to, might take I have to highlight time, everything manually and copy paste it to like mm-hmm. Google Drive mm-hmm. if I want to do it. Which I've I've started yeah, doing. Come on, I've started doing, work. and it's like a forever what? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what did you say? Or like highlight, Command A or like Control A is like highlight everything. My God, I've never heard of such a command. Is that true? <laughs> is that a joke? Uh, what? If you, I just if you click, and click on a text thing and, and you press Jesse, Control no! A, nah, bro. Nah. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> All right, yes. Well, Control A selects everything in a page. Well, that, and, uh, okay, that makes it simpler. Command A. But yeah, that that will be easy. I almost I almost had a tragedy the other day because I was yeah. in bed and I was uh, I was looking at my laptop and stuff, mm. and I see like the biggest, brownest, hairiest, strongest spider I've ever seen. <laughs> Literally on my uh, laptop, like very near to touching me, and mm-hmm. like uh, instinct instinctively, I'm like ah, and I just and I chucked my laptop across no. the entire no. room. No. <laughs> it fucking it like landed upside down, and it like caught just right on like a plastic bin so that it didn't smash. And it was like, okay. it was a stroke okay. of luck. It was a miracle that it didn't get destroyed because I chucked it full fury across the room. Before the spirit of George it. Washington wants you to make those videos. Yeah. <laughs> he wants you to create those those things. But by the way, I just want to say, un- unrelated to all mm-hmm. this, I just want to say that I, it do- just dawned on me yeah. that like I haven't posted anything on Twitter besides like BronyCon updates in like literal months. I have not posted anything on YouTube in literal mm-hmm. months. Probably like everyone like has no idea what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm just gonna say again for the thousandth time, dude, I'm in RFCK. Get in there. If you're ever ha- wondering like what happened to that monkey yeah, okay. guy, come in there. Go there. Fair enough. Fair. Don't you stream like what's your live streams on your main uh, your channel there? No, no, no. It's on RFCK. Oh, those are on Twitch. Okay, okay. That's cool. Yeah, it's all on RFCK. I'm, I'm all in on that. That's what I'm doing now. So if you're ever wondering, that's that's it, guys. Word. Come on over. Uh, okay, we've got one last voicemail. Uh, this is from uh, Make Rebel Pickles Great Again. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> Go. <laughs> the last episode of the PCP was great. 
They talked about Ow. t-shirts for two whole hours, and I was entranced <laughs> by every fucking minute of it. So I was okay. thinking, mm-hmm. why is this boring business talk interesting? The obvious mm-hmm. answer is because they care about it. They care about making money. They care about their business. <laughs> they care about their artistic process. And that's what I really want out of a discussion topic. I don't want, oh, this seems like a good idea. No, I want you guys to fucking care about what you're talking about. Don't just say something because you think it would be a good topic. Say it because you like it. Say it because you mean it. The problem I have with Ben talking about politics is because he's the only one who cares about politics. Nate okay. sort of cares okay. about politics, but every time they talk about it, he says, nah. I'm not a professional. I haven't researched this. True. You know, Nate did research during fucking login. <laughs> fuck, research the fuck out of Gurren Logan so that yeah. he could be an authority on it. So, Nate, why are you talking about politics when you could talk about Gurren Logan instead? <laughs> talk about what you care about. Talk about your art. Talk about your artistic process. Make the PCP Rebel Pixels again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, fair, fair <laughs> yeah. comment. Fair comment. Can't can do. Now, you know what? Actually, this was almost kind of entirely like one kind of like topic dedicated PCP. You know, we've been talking about tossing back and forth the idea of like doing like a topic episode. And I, I just think that like trying it out couldn't hurt. Even if it doesn't, not the well, whole okay, episode. We tried it out for it, like a year and a half. Well, we tried no, for several on, years, wait, I think. Stop, stop. Everyone is like, oh god, like topics are banned now. When like at the very beginning when we went back to mm-hmm. topic lists, it's always like, hey, the reason why we don't like to do topics is, is sometimes at least a lot of the time the topics aren't anything that we care about. That's the specific problem. And if there ever was a topic where we wanted to talk about something exclusively, then we should do that. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. True. This was like established at the very beginning. Like this isn't like a controversial, like, oh, we have to either do either. I, or. I, I totally it's just, agree. Like, the reason I, why we I did don't this. disagree in any way. I mean, the, t- t- today's care. episode was a topic. It yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, and obviously Obviously, yeah, we, we all care. And we we all have I stuff think to what will about. generally uh, mm-hmm. make it better for people is to just be more mindful of like rotating the cast of characters on the show. Because like uh, the last week, uh, it was all just Digi and Mage and Tom, which is a unique mm-hmm. uh, cast of characters for the podcast, and everyone mm-hmm. in the comments seemed pretty positive about it. True. Uh, maybe it's just they separating like Nate and Ben. Forever on every yeah. podcast. Maybe that's mm. what needs to be done. Well, I, I think we've because uh, everyone's we've, just we've, we've uh, complaining about the pol- I By the way, in the in the hotel room, I got to witness firsthand the loudest and most furious communism debate I've ever heard from Dude, this I, podcast. I, I, that, yeah. Nate, that was between Nate, Nate was no, not no, a part let him of finish. It. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was Penn and Michelle. That's true. <laughs> um, and it yeah. was like it was like the PCP were a physical location and I was inside of it with no and escape. And you can't leave. <laughs> yeah. Except that Yeah, yeah give, I had to run away. Escape, though. He one. just left the room. Well, that's the nature. Oh, you're all cowards. That's the name. Uh, thing about thing about that was that uh yeah, we were like literally shouting at each other. Yeah. And then like but then like at the end it was just like it was just over and it was fine. Yeah, yeah it ended. I don't know. It ended there was immediately. like even even when even when we even when we were shouting, like I didn't feel like no, bad. No. Like I felt like a little annoyed, but I didn't I, feel I like wouldn't, I wouldn't consider. I, it I hate this person shouting, and like yeah. there was there was no cool yeah. down either. It went it from it went from loud shouting to just <laughs> it, the, the debate's over at the end. That's true. There was yeah, some form is... of conciliation that was re- like a, they agreed that like. Uh, something was bad or something, and then it was like, yeah, okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> it was like she, she. If I remember, she was like, "What are you? What are you gonna do? Just like storm rich people's houses and take their shit?" And I was like, "No, I just think we should tax them." And she was like, "Oh, okay, I agree <laughs> yeah, with that." Yeah, and that was the end. <laughs> that was the like end of debate. Okay, good. you know, we, for, we, for the record, I, I, I just wonder about this sometimes. Sometimes I, no one's ever said this, but I, I always wonder if people think that in some way Michelle, who you know, basically seems to agree with me on a lot of these things, like is like a, my agent or like acting on my behalf. But I just want to be clear, that's absolutely not true. We, I mean, sure, we talk about these things. But she's not like an indoctrinated Nate mind person, and we we disagree on quite a bit. So I I don't know if anybody ever thought that. I just want to be clear, that's not the case. Michelle's a fucking Nate head. Who cares? <laughs> she's, yeah, she's not the biggest Nate head around. Disgusting. <laughs> the worst. I I like I giggle with glee, laying back in my my <laughs> soft bed, thinking about how I've slurdified Nathan about how it's like the worst thing that a human you, being. You you did achieve be. slurring it's the so term great. Nathan. That's true. That's true. Possibly because I didn't push it's back so against good. it at all. And also <laughs> and also invented the term. That's true. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, well, yeah. rest in peace, Nate Heads. That's going to do it for another episode <laughs> of the Procrastinators Nate Podcast. Head, the party's just Is that the end? Yeah, that's the, that's the last one. Oh, thank, thank <laughs> God. Did it. How, how long was this one? This is, uh, what are we at? Two and a half hours. Yeah, right, this is good. This is, this is a meaty one. Um, uh, Patreon.com. Ragon for today. Uh, we'll see you guys at the airport. That's, that's, that's next on the agenda for sure. We didn't even get to talk about how no. I destroyed my basement floor. Do, do you want to talk about that real quick? Save it for next time, or I'd, I'd be happy to hear. Uh, I feel like, nah, um, do... you, you want to talk about that next time, Munchie? Yeah, yeah, talk about an RFCK. Let's talk about an RFCK. I'll talk about, I'll, just fucking okay, go. Okay, fair f- enough. Follow us on RFCK. <laughs> um, oh, RFCK is on YouTube now. I've, I've, I've moved, yeah. well, I haven't, as of you hearing this, yeah. yeah, I moved all the streams. I'm uploading all the streams onto the Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers oh, that's YouTube good. channel. Because I know some people just don't in, don't won't go to Twitch. Mm-hmm. So if you're on YouTube and you want to see all that, there's like forty thousand hours of a uh, rowdy fuckers. Well, cop now that my stream. boy Ninja's not on Twitch, why would I deign to go there? It doesn't have the stamp of yeah, approval. Yeah. So you know, he, well, he was sucking up all the traffic. <laughs> so like, it's got to go somewhere. And why why would it go anywhere but mm-hmm. rowdy fuckers? Are, cop are you killers. guys gonna stream there or just like re-upload the the streams there? No, you know, I was th- I was I was thinking about maybe we could do. We I could mean, try. it's possible oh. to dual stream. It's possible to dual stream to twitch and youtube at the same time oh that'd probably be good i don't know exactly how to do it but i know it's possible mm, mm. well we, we, can, we can think about it later. yeah okay yesterday. in any case my body is all sore from yesterday ben i'm still like i'm like writhing in pain right now why, why are you sore? that's what i wanted oh because munchie came over and worked out yesterday oh sick yeah. that's dope munchie and munchie and you know kazzy's been coming over mm-hmm. and this time she brought munchie and uh mm-hmm. we all fucking lifted nice. And uh, I'll just, uh, yeah, the floor of my basement is destroyed. <laughs> As a result of this utter, lifting utter, exercise? or Yes, yes, that's oh, right. How how in- interesting. Tur- li- turn to literal gravel. But, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that's a you story for another time. the next time. RCK. Yeah, yeah, Bye. there you go. Okay, Bye. and patreon.com slash the procrastinators. One dollar, patron lounge, five dollars. I believe all 29 of the bonus episodes I think we're up to now. So uh, it's a fucking steal. They're pretty good. Fill your life with more podcasts. And uh, that's it. Pledge more Gimmick money. Gimmick podcast, $5. At TP Crastinators on Twitter for updates. Uh, it's a good place to be. And I don't know. I think we retweeted. I don't know if we retweeted a bunch of BronyCon stuff. I should, though. I should on the PCP Twitter. Anyway, that's it, everybody. See you next time. Have a good week. Uh, wonderful time. And I like you. Bye. Yeah. Hooja hooja. Yeah. 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 Oh. Die. I'm supposed to. Be working right now. I'm supposed to be working right now, but I'm not working. I'm doing nothing. My dick, I'm jerking myself. I'm so. Sub-